Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. We would like to acknowledge the presence, the physical and virtual presence of our distinguished resource persons from the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. We have Assistant Secretary Avelino Tolentino III, together with Attorney Christine Pascula Bello, who's virtually present. From the National Housing Authority, we have our General Manager, Mr. Marcelino P. Escalada, who's physically present, together with Engineer Victor C. Balba, Assistant General Manager, physically present, Architect Marisa B. Manikis, Group Manager, Management Service Group, physically present. Ms. Wilma D. Hernandez Mendoza, Group Manager, Financial Services Group. Attorney Jan Christopher D. Mahamud. Ms. Agnes R. Agay. Attorney Renji Bartolo. Attorney Eleanor A. Balatbat. Attorney Veronica B. Diaz. Ms. Jan Nered Hapay, all physically present. Virtually present, also from the National Housing Authority, we have Attorney Maria Magdalena de Leon Siacon, Mr. Sid Leandro Jacobo, Ms. Rosalie Pineda, and Ms. Felicidad Sanyo, both employees, employees union representatives. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Ms. Patricia Villamin, Chief Budget and Management Specialist, Together with Ms. Belinda Pinoy, Ms. Chenereth Eve Abalos, and Mr. James Evangelista. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have you, Secretary Judge Echeveri, External and Legal Affairs. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, we have Attorney Kim Dariel Collis of the Land Management Bureau, together with Nico Delusong. Policy Studies Division, and Silvia Villalobos, a Legislative Liaison Office. From the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Mr. Ramon Paul M. Falcon, Chief Economic Development Specialist, and Kenneth Cassie M. Tapnio, Economic Development Specialist. From the Civil Service Commission, and from the Governance Commission for GOCCs, we have Commissioner Michael Cloribel, Director Jean Carl Tupas, and Attorney Carlo Paolo Murcia. From the Government Service and Insurance System, GSIS, we have Attorney Lucio Yu Jr., Vice President, Legal Services Group, Attorney Jovain Lin Kikoy Marin, Ms. Irene Tayag, Ms. Gemma Tayag, Ms. Marcia De La Paz, Ms. Vilma Fuentes, Mr. Geoffrey Reyes, Ms. Lin Cabigtin, and Mr. Adriel Jonathan Bonsol. From the Social Security System, SSS, we have Attorney Joseph C. Desunya, Department Manager 3, together with Ms. Nerisa Sabado, Corporate Executive Officer 4, Member of the Loans, Member Loans Department. Mr. Mark Lawrence R. Monterde, from the Legislative Affairs Department. From Pag-ibig Fund, we have Mr. Fermin A. Santa Maria Jr., Senior Vice President, Business Development Sector. Attorney Marshall Pimentel Jr., Vice President and Legislative Liaison Officer. Attorney Jose Roberto Po, Department Manager and Deputy Legislative Liaison Officer. Ms. Anela Marie Alena, Department Manager for Research and Development Department. Attorney Cristel Ann Marie Duque and Ms. Jacqueline O. Constantino from the Institutional Housing Department. From the Presidential Commission for the Urban Poor, PICUP, we have Commissioner Melvin P. Mitra and Commissioner Norman B. Baloro. From the Land Bank of the Philippines, we have SVP LCC Pangilinan, Head of the Strategy and Knowledge Management Group, 
and AVP Generoso S. David, Head of the Programs Management Department. From the Pantawid Upa Coalition, we have Attorney George Katikbak, co-convener, together with Ms. Crisia Lorraine Enriquez, co-convener. From the Urban Poor Associates, we have Mr. Arwin C. Atentar, senior organizer. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Rachel. We reversed the agenda for today. The, the bills relative to the housing rental subsidy will be tackled first. I'd like to ask the Secretariat, did we invite the proponents of the House measure? Uh, Congressman Belmonte, Castello, Nieto, Pimentel, Villafuerte. Na invite ba sila? Na invite? Approve na kasi ito sa House. Eh. So, ito po yung gawin natin. We'd like to, in, in the following order, we'd like to ask the, the NEDA first. Ito po ay tungkol, patungkol doon sa mga panukalang batas na finile ng ating mga kasamahan, Senator Bong Revilla, Senate Bill 1767, Senator Bongo, Senate Bill 1227, Senator Laila Dilima, Senate Bill 1843, and the approved measure coming from the lower house, House Bill 8736. Ito po ay patungkol sa pagbibigay ng subsidy sa ating mga maralitang tigalunsod na pinapaalis, aalisin doon sa kanilang kinatitirikang lugar at pansamantala habang hindi pa ho nakakalipat sa isang formal na, na housing ay bibigyan ng subsidiya ng pamahalaan, 3,500 doon sa amount na galing sa bill ng lower house at uh, doon po sa, sa Senado ay meron pong provision na magbibigay ng assistance sa kanila habang hindi pa sila nakakalipat. Ito po ay Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Antiveros, uh, would like to. Miss, thank yeah. you, Mr. Chair. Just before the chair proceeds, may I just confirm, Mr. Chair, if my attendance was uh, noted in the hearing? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we recognize you first. Ah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I missed that with my uh, low audio. Yes. Salamat uh, po, Mr. Chair. We will not miss Senator Antiveros because probably this is one of your passions. So ito pong uh, rental subsidy ay hindi lamang po patungkol ngayon sa COVID pandemic kung hindi maging pakatapos po ng pandemya sa kadahilanan yung problema natin sa pabahay hindi lamang po sa Metro Manila kung hindi po sa mga ilang uh, urban areas ng Pilipinas ay patuloy po. So the the measure uh, the measures are designed to address short-term housing relief, affordable housing, an affordable housing program, which is temporary, a, a sort of housing stabilization program for low-income uh, city and urban dwellers. So ito po yung essence ng uh, measures na tatalakayan natin ngayon. Thereafter, we will tackle the, the, the bills relative to the extension of the corporate term of the National Housing Authority. So we start with the rental subsidy program. May we ask the National Economic and Development Authority to, to explain your position paper on this? Neda, are you around? Sino po sa Neda? Tony Rachel? Morning, Mr. Chairman. Your Honor. Can you identify yourself? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am Ramon Paul Falcon of the NEDA Social Development Staff. Thank you, sir. We, we, have in, we have in our possession your position paper, but can you briefly apprise this committee as to uh, your position, uh, NEDA? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Uh, we generally, on the part of NEDA, we generally support the goal and intent of the subject bills as these are aligned with the Philippine Development Plan, uh, PDP, 2017 to 2022, uh, updated. In particular, Chapter 12 on building safe, resilient, and uh, sustainable communities. In particular, these are consistent with the strategy of intensifying the implementation of alternative and innovative solutions 
in addressing the housing needs of the lower income and vulnerable sector. Uh, this initiative stands to benefit the homeless, poor, underprivileged, and low-income individuals. As such, the government may explore and propose uh, explore the proposed establishment of a rental subsidy program as a viable housing solution to ensure the immediate access to safe, adequate, livable, and affordable housing. Nevertheless, uh, we recommend for the funding, uh, we recommend for the funding source uh, to be clear, uh, the total subsidy amount and administrative costs based on the targeted beneficiaries that are necessary to determine the adequate amount of funding needed. Aside from this, we recommend the bills to be harmonized into a consolidated bill. Mr. Chairman, uh, may I may add in the chapter on Philippine of uh, the Philippine Development Plan, Chapter Twelve, Building Safe and Resilient and Sustainable Communities, we have a strategy uh, on adapting alternative housing solutions for low-income market, and in particular. Uh, the strategy, the specific strategy is titled Implementing Innovative Housing Finance Modalities. And may I read uh, that portion in the stra strategy? Uh, alongside with this, the implementation of the Tax Reform and Acceleration and Inclusion or TRAIN Act or Republic Act 10963, which rationalizes the tax incentives system for socialized housing will develop direct subsidies through housing vouchers, public rental housing, may I repeat, public rental housing, housing microfinance models, and Islamic financing schemes. A feasibility study and pilot implementation of the housing voucher and public rental housing modalities will be pursued by the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. Uh, support the uh, initiative to uh, legislate a public rental housing subsidy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your attention. Good morning. Neda, salamat. And uh, as a warning to all other agencies listening. Alam niyo po, si Senator Rontiveros and all other of my colleagues are listening likewise. Siguro po mas makakatulong yung ating mga ahensya ng pamahalaan kung kagaya ng sinabi ng NEDA, magbigay din kayo ng konkretong comment doon sa bills under consideration. Like for example, NEDA, yung housing voucher, this committee will need a more concrete proposal coming from your end. Paliwanag nyo to, although I know partly uh, some, some contents of that uh, program, a public rental housing subsidy program, bigyan nyo kami ng paper. Alam nyo po, uh, with all due respect to my colleagues, sa mga, sa mga nakikinig na ahensya, bago lang po ako dito, pero sawang-sawa na po ako makarinig ng we support the bills, we will submit our position papers next week, we have submitted our position papers, generally we support the bill, uh, we have no comment yet, our secretary is still studying the measure. Our legal team is studying the measure. But we support the bill. Wala po kayo na itulong doon. Wala po kayo na idagdag. Ang sinabi nyo lang, hindi po kami nag-oppose kasi baka pag initang kami sa budget hearing, hindi po kami kumokontra, no comment na lang kami. Pero wala po kayong na idagdag doon sa public hearing. Kaya yung mga susunod ko po mga tatanungin, Let's talk about the measures under consideration. Hindi po po pwede yung general statement, Mr. Chairman, we support the bill. We will submit our position paper next week. Wala po yun. Kung ganun po lagi yung sasabihin nyo, hindi na po namin kayo i-invite kasi it's a total waste of time. Your resources, the government resources, the committee's resources, kung paulit-ulit lang pong ganun. So maraming salamat, Neda, but we expect you we expect you within this week to submit a folder about that housing voucher program, the public rental housing subsidy program. 
Sana po, Neda, ang maintindihan namin ganito. Sana po, meron kayong pag-aaral na kung paano po maipapasok itong rental subsidy doon sa ating four-piece program ng DSWD. Paano po ito magko-converge? Paano po magsasanib bagamat sa urban centers lang yung 3,500? Ito po ba ay karag pwedeng karagdagang bigay sa ating mga maralitang tigalunsod o over and above dun sa natatanggap nilang four piece? Sana po, Mr. Neda, kung sino man ang Neda, wala si Secretary Chua, ganyan po yung maisubmit nyo sa amin. At ganun din po yung mga ibang ahensyang nakikinig ngayon. Huwag na po yung we support the bill. We will submit our position paper. Hindi na po namin tatanggapin kung ganun yung sasabihin nyo. Uh, okay na po yun. Uh, Mag-thumbs up na lang kayo. I-adjourn ko na to. So, let's be concrete. Let, be let us be substantive. Let, let the proposals help shape the final hubris of this bill. And let us all, let us all join hands in making the measures, lalong-lalong ito sa pabahay, more relevant uh, as we go along. Thank you. Uh, we have, an, uh, unless uh, Senator Antiveros would like to react, ma'am. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll continue to listen as we go along. Salamat po. Ito pong DBM, nandito po ba kayo? DBM. Uh, we have Ms. Patricia Villamin uh, and others, DBM. DBM, can you hear us? IBM, wala? Yes, Mr. Chair, good morning po. Yes, nakita niyo po yung, yung measure, na, nabasa niyo yung mga bills, nakalagay po doon, it will come from the budget of the DSUD. Eh kung titingnan naman po niyo yung DSUD, wala naman pong budget. So, paano natin ito mapaparoll mapapa out, uh, ma'am? Anong proposal ng DBM? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I apologize po, but we are not the bureau handling the DSUD. Our bureau handles government corporation, particularly, particularly po the, the housing corporation. So we defer to the bureau handling. I'm not sure po if there's a representative here from Bureau B. That's uh, another part of pro forma answers being given by government agencies. We're not the relevant agency or bureau in charge. So sino in charge dito? Kayo ay sa housing pero hindi kayo makakasagot dito ma'am? Tama po ba yun? Sir, our corp uh, coverage covers National Housing Authority, Social Housing Corporation, and the National Home Mortgage F Finance Corporation po. The, the issue is from a different po bureau po. So, which bureau is in charge of rental housing subsidy, if ever? There is one. Uh, the pag should po, sir, the issue is under Bureau B po, and dito po si Ms. Bell Pinoy po from Bureau B. Na ba si Ms. Belinda? Ms. Belinda, are you around? Good morning, sir. Yes. Can you respond sir. to that question? Uh, uh, it's about the rental. Yes. Public housing. Sir, for 2021, uh, there's no budget for uh, this issue about uh, regarding the, uh, that uh, activity, mm -hmm. sir. So, ang sagot mo, walang pagkukuna ng pondo, uh, in yes. short. Wala sa budget po ng, ng housing issue. Yung tanong ko kanina, is there a possibility of converging this with the four-piece program of DSWD? Uh, ang pagkakaalam po, sir, may mga ganong ano, sa DSWD, meron silang mga financial assistance at sa DPWH din yata, sir, eh. Real creation assistance. Financial assistance for what? For rental? Uh, for, for relocation assistance for fam those families na ano na na re relocate Iba po ito ma'am ito ay rental assistance habang hindi pa nakakalipat sa isang formal housing uh, settlement ma'am So ito yung bridge uh, pag paglikas niya sa isang ISF relocation site papunta doon sa formal housing settlement site na hindi pa siguro tapos, yung, yung bridge, yung in-between, ito po yung i-finance kung, kung, kung naunawaan nyo sana. So, hindi po ito yung paglipat lang na, o di, ito rin, pagpagawa ng bahay mo, ito yung pambilin simento, yero, uh, coco lumber, hindi po yon Ito yung pag-upa, nabasa nyo po ba yung bill, ma'am, o hindi? Yes po. 
So ito yung na-approve sa house, ito po ay nangangailangan ng 3,500 uh, sa bawat sa, sa, sa para sa isang pamilya. So balit ang isang miyembro ng pamilya ay pwedeng maging isang formal beneficiary ng isang housing program ng pamahalaan. Yun po yung ibig sabihin nun. I think you have to read the bill and I'll get back to you later. NHA, can you comment on this? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, the NHA has submitted our proposal, our position paper last June 15, 2021 to the office of Senator Francis Tolentino. But I'd like to bring in some specific concerns with respect to the bill, Your Honor. Uh, I have one objection and four affirmative statements with respect to the bill. Uh, I'm referring, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, in reference to House Bill number 8736, we raised the objection on the third paragraph of Section 4, wherein housing agencies such as National Housing Authority, National Mortgage Finance, Baggy Big Fund, and whoever under the key shelter agencies will be made to bear the cost of extending the rental subsidy if the completion of the housing unit is delayed. There are numerous factors, Your Honor, outside the government control that can lead to the delays and being mandated to show the rental subsidy extension may also compromise our agency's budget and work plans. However, this may be the objection, Your Honor and Mr. Chair, but I also have some suggestions. If and when the delay really is justifiable for external reasons, I think there has to be another provisions within which we can also extend the five-year if it is valid and justifiable. If the delay is not valid and not justifiable, Your Honor, I think everyone should be also accountable for bearing the, the, the rental subsidy as extended beyond the five years. So that's our objection, Your Honor. Uh, 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 reference? Sir, sir, for a while. Uh, Mr. Escalada, you're saying that uh, any delay not attributable to NHA or any government entity should not automatically extend the, the subsidy program? If the reason of the delay, Your Honor, is justifiable, I think the five-year should also be extended because the reason is justifiable. If in case, let's say, for example, about permitting conversions right after the notice of award and notice to proceed has been issued, and that is external to the implementing agency, so the, under the, the provisions, it will be shouldered by the implementing agency. And that would impact to our budgetary requirements, Your Honor. That's my position. Sir, bigyan kita ng hypothetical question na nagawa sana, hindi nagawa, pwedeng gawin, dahil wala pa tayo nitong batas na to. Pagkatapos nung Marawi Siege, marami tayong mga kababayan nalipat sa pagadian, nalipat sa mga lugar outside Marawi. Yung iba po ay napunta sa mga relocation centers. Yung iba po ay napunta ng Cagayan de Oro, may kamag-anak. Umupa. Umupa sila dahil nasira yung bahay nila sa Marawi. So ilang ilang taon na ho ngayon makalipas yung Marawi siege? Ilang taon na po ba? Tatlo? Apat? Uh, that was in 2017, Your Honor. 2017. So ngayon, four years. Four years na. So kung halimbawa yung isang, uh, yung isang nakatira sa Marawi, though not an ISF, or perhaps an ISF, nalipat sa pagadian, umupa, kung, nakasa, kung meron pong ganitong programa na, eh, dapat binabayaran ng pamahalaan yung pangupa niya sa pagadian. Habang hinihintay niyang matapos yung, yung housing program ng NHA sa Marawi. That's Di correct, ba? Your Honor. So ito yung, ito yung uh, ehemplo na kung merong ganitong batas ng umiiral sana, ay eh, madali nating na, na, nabigyan ng bridge housing yung yung ating mga kababayan sa Marawi. Halimbawa lang po 'yon. At hindi rin po uh, ma, ma e, pwedeng ihalin tulad din dun sa mga kababayan natin nandito sa Metro Manila na umuupa subalit nung tamaan ng pandemya, wala nang pangupa. Meron namang housing program sa Bulacan na pwede sana ang lipatan subalit hindi pa tapos. So, ito yung mga konkretong uh, ehemplo nung kung saan pwedeng ipasok yung 
uh, itong uh, rental housing subsidy program. But I agree with you na in case that the government is at fault, the program should be should go beyond five years. Go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Junis Galada. Thank you, Your Honor. If I may proceed, uh, in the light of the previous point, we support the provision of Senate Bill 1227 and 1767, setting the maximum year period of for the subsidy of five years or upon the beneficiaries acquisition of permanent housing, whichever comes first. We would like to affirm this, Your Honor, because the normal construction period, based on our experience, is three years. So we have a 24 months construction period subject to 12 months extension. So the five-year period subsidy, Your Honor, and Mr. Chair, is a very practical timetable for the rental subsidy. Next is the role of the go local government units as partners in the implementation or implementing A should be emphasized, as they are charged with implementing of UDHA and the role of conducting census tagging and ISF should also be shared within its A as our agencies already undertaking in this manner. With regard to the appropriations for implementation of the program, Your Honor, and members of the committee, NSA recommends the provision wherein the funding of the rental subsidy for ISF that will be displaced by the infrastructure projects shall be included in the project costing itself so if we already project your honor that there will be a build 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 projects so the composition of the rental subsidy should be incorporated already in our own project proposal from the very start the subsidy funds shall in turn then be provided directly to the disbursing agency so there is no surprises here your honor that indeed we just pass on the obligation to the implementing agency to assume the rental subsidy. From the very start, if we see that there are infrastructures on the build, build, build projects or whatever projects, infrastructure affecting housing, in the planning of the housing itself, the rental subsidy will be already included in the project cost. Sir, can you, can you elaborate on that? Uh -huh. How much is uh, a low cost housing per unit? For instance, here in Metro Manila, or in, in a Metro Manila suburb, Cavite, for instance, Nai Cavite, how much would it cost? Uh, right now, Your Honor, it's 530000 So right, right now, 530000 So we're doing that in Nai Cavite, Your Honor. Then if and when we see that it will be for the next three to five years, so we shall already include the rental subsidy counting from year one to year five. So so mangyayari nun, sir, yung 3500 imumultiply mo ng three years. That's correct, Your Honor. And then add it up to the 530,000? That's correct, Your Honor. So, magkano na yun? Can you, can we add? That will be the rental subsidy as part of the cost. So, 3,500. Times 12, times 3. Times 12, times 3. 126,000. Times 530. Plus 530. So 656,000. That's correct, Your Honor. In effect, the, the one who would shoulder the, the entire 656,000 would be the beneficiary, the informal settler. So, paano naging subsidy ngayon? That would be a pay item number to Your Honor. The pay item number one would be the construction. The pay item number two would be rental subsidy. So, hatiin na lang natin siya. For purposes of budgeting, that will be included. But for purposes of disbursement, it will be carved out from the original project cost. But in effect, it, it will come from the pocket of the uh, urban settler, uh, relocated, the relocatee himself or herself. So the government would, would be able to recover whatever amount uh, was initially shouldered, but ultimately the burden falls on the beneficiary. Parang in spread mo lang, ganun ba yan? There are two types, Your Honor. There are items in our project cost which is recoverable and non recoverable. The project cost, which is direct to housing, such as land acqui, land development, and housing construction, we shall recover that. The rental subsidy would now become under non recoverable item. So we will not recover. We will not pass on 
the payment of the rental subsidy to them. That would be a subsidy from government, non-recoverable. In case of payment, where will the, the, the money receive uh, uh, be turned over? National Treasury, NHA, which government agency? Or if if yeah. you mean the monthly amortization, Your Honor, it will be paid directly to... No, the, the 3,500. In the, in the proposed bill, Your Honor, I think it goes to the should. The should. Dapat isa na lang ito na ano. Ha? The should, uh, is that clear? Uh, uh, with the permission of uh, Mr. Escalada, uh, the should is here. Yes. Ganun ba yun? Uh, sir, uh, my, my understanding is um, this has also be uh, taken in the context of our uh, Young Road Right of Way, Young Right of Way Act. Where, uh, where there are also you know, um, uh, subsidies granted to project-affected families, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Dito, uh, hindi to road right of way. Eh. Ito yung mga no, sir, normal right? settlers natin yes, sir. sa Metro Manila, y yes, sir. sa Tugigaraw, na ililipat. Yes, sir. Yeah, so. Yes, sir. Um, no, let me just... Ano. Sir, this one, we, we, we support this because this is... Um, it does not uh, it does not uh, make a distinction between yung affected by natural or yung man made na mga movements on the other hand i'm just stating sir that uh, there is also the right of way act wherein we grant uh, subsidies and uh, parang parang payment schemes for those who are affected by uh, by by infrastructure projects sir meron sila sir meron sila sir dong ano meron sila sir dong na uh, that's a different that concept because this yes, is a, a rental housing subsidy program yes, sir. that should serve as a bridge. Yes, sir. Uh, that should serve as a bridge uh, during that period wherein that informal settler has no place where to go. Yes, sir. Uh, irrespective of whether it, there is a man-made or a, a, a whatever natural calamity. So, parang malayo, sir, yung right of way. Hindi sir, mag mag mag-aabot lang sila sir in relation to the to the uh, pagkatinamaan ka ng infrastructure. During the temporary time na tatamaan ka ng infrastructure, meron kang uh, meron kang magiging grants, a uh, compensation if you are uh, part of the ano, of the if you have if you have uh, ownership over the property or of or of the land. Informal settlers nga ito eh. Sir, dun sa Mangahan Floodway. Dun sa structure lang. Pasig, Mangahan Floodway. Ni relocate Mm -hmm. Baka yung hindi natin alam kung ano yung magiging uh, pulisiya ng mga darating na administrasyon, hindi na on-site uh, settlement or uh, in-site, baka ilipat na. Manggahan floodway, ililipat. So, paano na-involve dito yung, ano, yung uh, uh, right-of-way analogy mo? Uh, because, sir, in, uh, in infrastructure uh, cases, sir, wherein there is displacement, uh, the Right of Way Act also recognizes the rights, sir, of uh, those who do not have formal titles to, to, uh, to their, uh, to their lots. So, dun, dun sa structure, sir, meron po. I see someone raising his hand. Uh, is, is that DNR or? Sorry. Ah, Pantaw Pantawid Upa. Pantawid Upa is an NGO. Uh, NGO, you would like to react. Uh, Pantawid Upa Coalition. Uh, Attorney George Katigbak, if I'm not mistaken. Kayo po ba yun? Uh, yes, sir. We, with the permission of uh, Mr. Escalada, pa pa pasalitain natin itong pantawid upa and then we'll go back to you. Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Kat uh, Attorney George Katigbak, pantawid upa coalition. Uh, magandang umaga po, Mr. Chair. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, gusto ko lang pong uh, sumingit sa usapan dahil uh, ito pong mga pinag usapan po natin ay napag-aralan na po ng Pantawid Upa Coalition. In fact, meron po tayong baseline study tungkol po dito sa rental housing subsidy. Uh, marami po ang maaring funding source nito. Sa ngayon po na wala pa po tayong batas, uh, hindi pa po ito na include sa General Appropriations Act. Pero kung ito po ay magiging uh, ganap na batas, pwede na po itong yearly ipasok po sa General Appropriations Act ng DSUD. Yung po sa nabanggit ni, uh, ni GM Escalade po at saka ni ASEC uh, Ave na kapag ito po ang rental housing subsidy ay gagamitin sa kagyat na paglilipat ng mga affected families from a government infrastructure project 
kagaya po ng build 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 kagaya ng paggawa ng mga kalye o ng mga uh, paggawain pang publiko maaari pong kuhanin ang subsidy doon po sa pondo na naka-earmark for relocation po ng mga affected families. So kung sagasaan po ang ng isang uh, expansion ng kalye ang mga bahay, yung meron pong naka-earmark sa bawat uh, proyekto na relocation money, pwede po ditong kunin. Kung ito po naman po ay uh, gagamitin sa kagyat na paglilipat sa mga taong apektado ng natural disasters or kahit man may disaster, kagaya po nang nabanggit ninyo sa Marawi, maaari po itong kunin sa uh, pondo ng iba-ibang ahensya na nagbibigay ng emergency assistance. Kagaya po ng, uh, sa Office of Civil Defense na kung saan meron po silang nakareserva na pera kapag ka po nangangailangan ng uh, tulong pinansyal para sa pabahay. Ito po, readily available po ito every time po na meron tayong mga sakuna na nagbibigay suporta po ang OCD. Uh, maari din po itong uh, kunin sa uh, pondo ng lokal na pamahalaan. Especially po dito sa magiging epekto ng ating uh, mandanas ruling na kung saan uh, malinaw po na sinasabi sa ruling na ang uh, usaping pabahay ay isa sa mga Uh, devolved na aktibidades na nandoon po sa ating mga probinsya at sa mga city. So bilang devolved po na uh, programa, uh, kasama po dito ay ang pera na devolved din dapat sa mga local government. So maaari pong iba-iba ang uh, panggalingan po ng pondo, depende po sa kung saan uh, gagamitin itong uh, rental housing subsidy, Your Honor. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Attorney Katigbak. Uh, Senator Antiveros, recognize. Oo, salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Kasunod po nung manifestation ng Pantawid Upa, gusto ko pong mag-raise ng uh, dalawang tanong uh, tungkol dito sa ating mga bills tungkol sa public rental housing subsidy. Uh, tungkol po sa eligibility at pangalawa po tungkol sa project coverage. Uh, natingin ko po yun yung twofold interest ng gobyerno sa mga bills na ito. So una po, Mr. Chair, Uh, kahit ba yung mga apektado ng hindi ODA funded, hindi ODA funded na proyekto ay mabibigyan ng public rental subsidy? Uh, I seem to recall na nabanggit ni, um, ni Sir Escalada yung ODA funded projects. Pero kahit ba yung apektado ng non-ODA funded na proyekto ay eligible dito sa public rental subsidy? GM Escalada, you can respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, based on our experience right now, Your Honor, the moment we already started, the, the, the fact that we already started our long haul south haul, mm -hmm. uh, this is not speaking about the rental subsidy, but when we package the 105,000 housing units from Batangas to, from Laguna to Batangas and Laguna mm -hmm. to Sorsogon, aside from the, the pay item, which is the rail itself, the DOTR has also incorporated therein the funding for housing. I think that's the that's the essence that I was trying to refer to your honor. Aside from mm -hmm. that fact, if there if there is a regular a regular projects that we will undertake. So in the meantime that we are not yet done with our housing projects for the next three to five years, the costing of the rent should also be factored in as early as the planning itself. Salamat, GM. So, pati sa mga hindi ODA-funded na proyekto tulad ng Long Haul, South Hall na yon. So, in principle, uh, lahat po ay uh, magiging eligible dyan sa public rental subsidy. That is our proposal, Your Honor. That is your proposal, uh, GM. Oh, salamat po. Tinatanong ko po kasi iyan, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi... Uh, may estilo, lalo na sa mga DPWH implemented projects na ano, hindi ODA funded po, na bibigyan lang ng say 35,000 pesos ang mga tao pagkatapos pero wala nang pabahay. So importante po yon Mr. Chair, wala nang pabahay. In effect, yung subsidy, quote-unquote subsidy na ibinibigay, hindi siya public rental subsidy. Pero cash po siya, pero kapalit ng housing rights na para naman po sa ating komite ay kumbaga batayang karapatang pantao no housing rights so kumbaga hindi exchangeable kahit para sa cash dun po sa uh, proposed bills natin yung contemplation ay na yung subsidy 
At 35,000 man yan o higit, yung subsidy ay paunang suporta pa lang. Pero magiging participants pa rin yung mga tao sa government housing program. Uh, acceptable po ba yon Mr. Chair, sa ating resource persons para lang um, makonfirm yung issue ng eligibility? Uh, yeah, Ms. Calada, maliwanag po dito sa proposed measures mm -hmm. na yung NHA with the permission of Senator Antiveros Salamat, Mr. Chair. certify to the eligibility of the applicants of the program coordinate mm -hmm. with the various agencies, update the master list. Ang tanong po mm -hmm. ni Senator Ontiveros, yung binigay po ba na subsidy doon sa isang beneficiary will entitle the, the beneficiary to the permanent housing program. Mm -hmm. Ganun po ba, Senator Ontiveros? Yes, Mr. Chair. Housing yes, rights na hindi po for sale, kumbaga, hindi po, for, hindi po kapalit. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Your Honor. Moving forward, as soon as the law will be implemented and enacted, Your Honor, that should be the coverage. But right now, tama as is Senator Hindoveros, it's just a matter of providing them temporary assistance of 18,000 pesos the moment they are relocated. And there is no assurance as well whether they are qualified or not qualified to get housing. That is an inventory of NHA. As we speak, that is the, the standard. But as we move mm -hmm. along, if we are able to approve the law, I think aside from the fact that there is uh, automatic initial assistance plus the rental mm -hmm. subsidy, plus the housing uh, unit that is secured and uh, allocated to them once it is completed. Pero, opo, Chair. Pero NHA nga po, gaya ng binasa ni uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, GM pala, ay NHA ang magsa-certify sino yung eligible na participants uh, beneficiary. So, uh, kasi syempre po, pag, uh, in uh, pag inaprubahan ng aming komite itong mga bills, uh, may legislative intent na po kami dyan. Ang intent po ng NHA, tama po ba, ay in principle pa rin na lahat uh, ng mga participant beneficiaries, whether of uh, ODA funded or non-ODA funded, ay entitled both dun sa initial assistance and dun sa housing rights pa rin. Kumbaga, yun po ba yung intention kung kaabutin po talaga ng aming bill. And uh, just for the record, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, at the proper time, magpo-propose po ako ng language para amyandahan yung ating mga bills at siguruhin yung karapatan ng mga affected. Would that be acceptable, Mr. Yes, Chair, to, to yes, the NHA? Uh, uh, Salamat, Mr. Chair. Yung sinasabi ni Senator Risa, ganito ulitin ko ulit, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yung nakatanggap ng initial, as certified by NHA, mm. siya na din dapat yung intended formal housing beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Hindi correct, iba yeah. kasi minsan iba yung iba yung nakatanggap sa initial pinaalis mo lang pero pagdating dun sa paggagawa na ng bahay iba naman yung makakatanggap. So humaba yung listahan yung original beneficiary na pinaalis sa isang site ay eh, inaiba. So siguro yun yung yun yung uh, purpose nung question ni Senator Hontiveros if I'm not mistaken. Isa lang tao yung yung naapektuhan, siya rin dapat yung uh, mabigyan ng tulong ng pamahalaan. Yeah. Okay. Salamat, so, Mr. Chair. At na yung nag-iisang taong iyon, halimbawa, per person or per family, nakatanggap sila ng subsidy at sa huli ay makatatanggap din po sila ng housing. Yeah. We can confirm that, Your Honor, that would be the guidelines yeah. already set forth by NHA. Uh, NHA, in all of the LIAC, is the vice chair. So we have actually the mayor the, mm -hmm. the National Housing Authority and other members of the national government agencies composed of the local interagency committee responsible for the assessment, evaluation, validation, and the eventual issuance of an award. So we will make Sina. sure, Your Honor and Senator Antiveros, that indeed there will be consistency in our records from the time we tag, we census, we qualify, from the moment we re release the initial uh, entitlements up to the issuance of the award of a particular housing project. Marami salamat po, GM, sa assurance na iyon uh, with the encouragement uh, of our chair. So moving chair, dun sa pangalawa huling tanong ko po sa uh, mga bills po natin, yung tungkol po sa uh, project coverage, yung mga, yung mga tao po ba na displaced, displaced ng government housing projects, uh, kasama po ba sila? Uh, kasi nga po, kapag ang gobyerno nagbibuild upward, halimbawa, 
yung mga tao na nakatira dun sa land parcel, syempre, kailangan ma-displace during construction. Kailangan nilang uh, umalis, kunyari, sa loob ng dalawang taon, habang yung land development at construction ay isinasagawa. Pati po ba sila mabibigyan ng public uh, rental subsidy? Uh, palagay ko po, Mr. Chair, importanteng uh, malinaw po ito kasi kung hindi po sila uh, bibigyan ng rental subsidies, baka mapilitan silang tumanggap ng resettlement yun na nga, sa mga malalayong lugar kung nasaan yung NHA housing stock natin sa halip na ipaglaban yung kanilang lugar dun sa bagong housing development ng NHA halimbawa. Marami pong ganitong sitwasyon, Mr. Chair, sa maraming lupa sa National Government Center halimbawa. So paglilinaw lang po kung pati po yung displaced mismo sa government housing projects uh, ay makatatanggap din ng public rental subsidy. Ms. Calada, you may reply. Uh, may I refer the matter to ASIC uh, Tolentino, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, ay, ay, hindi ko pa sir na tetrace, pero san, baka ho. <laughs> Kung makabibig po ang aking ano. Ah, pampang ka. Oh. Opo. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Chair, uh, in relation to that uh, to that query, we believe that uh, yung Hamas housing projects are also should be considered as infrastructure programs and therefore should mm -hmm. also have a a uh, an allocation relating to this subsidy. Mr. Chair, okay, okay lang ibalik ko lang dun sa kaninang discussion about ODA. Tanong mm -hmm. ko kasi yes, Senator Rivera should be answered. Yeah, yes po, sir. Um yes, we will consider it, sir, kasama po because uh, we see that mass housing projects are also infrastructure projects and therefore yes. uh, malalagyan po sila sir ng ng uh, ng subsidia uh, bilang yung habang binubuo po yung project and at the same time they should also be considered doon sa kanilang on-site sir na na pagtatayo ang sir ng project because sir actually the policy naman sir is really on-site uh, in city near city of city so because yes. they are project affected talagang papasok po sila sa first priority sir mm -hmm. kaya po nung ano kagaya Salam. po nung uh, Um, with the permission of Senator Ontiveros, kagaya po yes, ng uh, Jario kahapon, si Secretary Tugade, apparently nag-groundbreak uh, sila nung phase one nung tutuban to Clark sa Bulacan mm -hmm. po. Ang daming bahay doon. Ang daming tinamaan doon. So ganito po ba yung sinasabi nyo kanina? Na-apply -na pa to dito sa uh, tutuban to Clark Railways? I, I suppose so, sir, hindi ko lang masyadong kabisado yung detalye because we have a DOTR DHSUD Project Management Officer. Um, mm -hmm. Doon, sir, pinag-uusapan, sir, yung mga uh, entitlement, sir, no, affected, yeah, yeah. sir. Mahirap kasi DOTR naman ngayon. Hindi, sir. Uh, it's uh, because, sir, the entitlement... Hindi dapat NHA na lang. Sir, the entitlement, sir, um, we partner, sir, with the... We, we, we envision, sir, na yung kung sino, sir, yung project implementing agency. Doon, sir, pinapartner sa amin. Sir, it's a DOTR, DHSUD, PMO, pero actually on ground, kasama po namin ng NHA, sir. It's just uh, nakalodge lang po doon sa opisina namin, sir, yung, ano, yung PMO, sir. And salamat, uh, Mr. Chair, at salamat, uh, ASEC uh, Tolentino, doon sa assurance nyo na, oo nga, pati yung mga government housing uh, uh, projects uh, should be considered as infra. At, kung, at dahil doon ay makatatanggap din ng public rental subsidy yung mga taong kailangan lumikas habang isinasagawa yung infra or uh, government housing project na iyon. And yes, Mr. Chair, I would welcome kung may idadagdag si uh, Asik Tolentino tungkol dun sa earlier point natin tungkol sa ODA and non-ODA funded na mga proyekto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam Senator Antiveros. Uh, Mr. Chair, napag-usapan po kasi yung ODA kanina at na-experience po namin doon sa DOTR PMO, Mr. Chair. Uh, nagkakaroon, sir, kasi ng konting uh, nuances. Parang mm -hmm. medyo mas mataas ang entitlements coming from uh, ODA uh, uh, loans. Mm -hmm. So, okay. sir, when we go to the TWG, I would like to partner uh, with the legislative staff so that we can also maybe baka yung ating tinitignan, tinitignan sir na entitlements, medyo ay tapat po natin sa abot mm -hmm. po ng ating makakaya doon po sa ODA entitlements because the challenge is there could be kunwari a, a line or mm -hmm. an infrastructure project some are ODA finance and we will have to follow their entitlements tapos some mm -hmm. will be national government funded mm -hmm. uh, iba ang entitlements sir doon po humihirap na social preparation So, oh, okay. baka po yung sanang usapin po na yun, maitakel po, uh, hindi ko alam kung sa TWG or sa IRR, mm -hmm. but uh, 
it becomes a problem sir sa social prep sir oh salamat for pointing that out uh, asik tolentino go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, ah, sorry mr chair ah okay po mr chair salamat po well uh, gusto ko lang i appreciate mr chair yung uh, napakahalagang puntong iyon uh, ni asik tolentino na dapat pareho yung uh, entitlements at yung social protections sa mga participant beneficiary sa mga uh, non ODA at sa ODA uh, funded uh, housing projects or housing related projects and for one uh, Mr. Chair uh, willing po ako na yung uh, ledge uh, people ko policy people ko ay sumali sa anumang ganyang process na binanggit ni Asik Tolentino na maaring tawagin ng chair uh, to achieve this uh, parity kumbaga uh, in terms of entitlements among yung mga different constituencies ng uh, housing sector. Uh, Mr. Chair, follow up lang po. Uh, uh, kaya ba ng DOTR, DSUD, PMO, i-confirm na indeed meron ng provisions para sa public rental housing uh, today, yung as we speak? Kaya na po ba nilang i-confirm? Meron pa nagtataas na kamay, Director Ruena Dineros of the shoot? Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, you should answer. Um, they are the ones uh, uh, also in charge of the public housing. So, so Director Ruena Dineros okay. of the shoot, virtually present, uh, you can respond. Um, yes, sir. sir, good morning po. Come closer yes. to your mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, magandang umaga po. Uh, yes, sir, Ruena Dineros po from the public housing and settlement service of the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development. So, sir, uh, with the reference, actually, kanina, inabutan ko po galing po kasi sa orientation. Meron pong usapin on the, the sub, why the subsidy plus the housing. Sa, akin, sa amin po kasi, ang tingin po namin siya, at the end of the day, there's really a need for a subsidy, especially uh, when the time comes na kailangan talaga itong displaced families, they have to be moved out of these informal communities. Kasi ang gusto ko nating makita, magkaroon mo talaga maayos yung ating infra development, yung infra projects kaagad. And then, ang tingin po dapat natin doon, ano yung magiging effect? As in, may economic return po yung pag nagawa natin yung mga infra projects natin. Mm -hmm. That's why it is very important for us to have this subsidy at least three years. And then, Ang bibilangan natin ngayon, yung mga housing production arm, like the National Housing Authority, they should, they should see to it that at the end of the third year, uh, kailangan may resettlement area na. Kasi the subsidy, nandyan siya, and then the subsidy ends, pag lumipat na sila dun, talaga sa actual housing unit nila. Opo, Ma'am Rowena, but even before we get to that three years from now, as of today po, Kaya nyo na po bang i-confirm through your DOTRD SUD PMO na meron ng provisions para sa public rental housing ngayon pa lang? Ma'am, sa pagkakaalam po, yung take PMO namin po. Ma'am, yung audio po ninyo? We cannot hear you, ma'am. Uh, oh, siguro... Ma Pasensya na, ma'am. Yung, yung take PMO po namin, meron pong ano, meron pong provision on that one. I think uh, it was... On already being discussed on this uh, uh, rental subsidy uh, program for, for the DODR projects. But All for right. the DSUD, sir, in fact, together with Pantawid Upa, during our HADSI office, have study conducted. That's why as early as last year, we're having this uh, policy being uh, formulated on the ISF rental subsidy. So, okay. meron nung gano'ng usapin. In fact, gusto nga ho namin i-ano na, pwede ho bang may trap B? Kasi yung mga ISF, sinasabi yung trap A is for those who really wanted to avail of resettlement or housing project. But mm. there are I ISF na gusto lang nila rental eh. Mm. So, pwede natin silang bigyan ng until five years. Yung subsidy would be until five years. Ngayon, Ang reason behind the five-year period is like, may assumption na siguro na-improve na nila yung quality of life nila by that time. And then they have decided really as to really they want to avail of a housing project. By that time, mm -hmm. tapos na yung subsidy. 
Pwede na silang bumili on their own or mag-avail of a housing uh, project or housing unit. So yun ang sinasabi namin, parang may gano'n na track A, track B. Yung track A is three-year period, subsidy, mm. and then may resettlement sa kanilang nakaabang. Dapat tapos na yun, by the end of the three year. Ngayon yung track B naman, ito naman yung ibang ISF na ayaw talaga, <laughs> ayaw muna nila, pero we're giving them at least five years to improve mm-hmm. their that, and then the subsidy ends, and then by that time, you have to look for your housing. As in, mm-hmm. kailangan nakamove na kayo kasi improve na yung quality of life niyo. Assumption doon. So yun mm-hmm. po yung... Salamat Ma'am Rowena. I'm sure uh, hindi lang ako yung miyembro ng komite na interesadong uh, tignan pati yung mga detalye ng track A, track B na iyon at ano yung magiging modes ng uh, pagsuporta sa mga informal settlers through these uh, two tracks. Pero for now po Ma'am, pwede, ko po bang, pwede po ba kaming humingi ng kopya through the chair, kopya ng inyong existing guidelines para sa public rental housing sa mga DOTRD sud projects. Sige ma'am, hihingi po kami sa ano. Um, ano po ma'am? Sorry yung audio nyo. Uh, yes ma'am, uh, okay, mag, po. Ano po kami, mag-re-request po kami sa aming resettlement uh, coordinator. Actually, okay. there is this PM. Okay, medyo choppy. Pero na, nakuha ko, ko naman, Mr. Chair, na nag-commit si ma'am so, Rowena na... Po. Ah, sige po, sorry. Okay po ma'am, iintayin uh, ko po yon yung submission nyo sa komite through our chair. Salamat po. Uh, Mr. Chair, maaari ba akong magpatuloy kay, kay GM Escalada ulit? Before that, Senator Antiveros, I'd yes, like Mr. to chair. remind Ms. Rowena that the committee would appreciate the earlier submission of that uh, documents requested by Senator Antiveros so that the committee will be guided accordingly Focusing primarily on existing rental subsidy programs being implemented in whatever uh, nomenclature uh, it is being done, plus uh, the points you earlier raised that there are existing rental beneficiaries who are not willing to live, live permanently or transfer permanently in a formal housing program. But the essence of the bills under consideration would require a member of that family to be plucked out and be upgraded as a part of a formal housing program, no longer rental. So, dapat siguro ganun yung isasubmit yung, yung paper sa amin plus yung, uh, yung requirement na giving them prioritization in case they will graduate to another uh, level of a formal housing program. May we request that by next week, Ma'am Rowena? Sir, Providing this committee a copy as well as Senator Antiveros. drafted already a sort of an implementing rules and on our ISF. Naririnig po ba ako, sir? Sir? Yung medyo chapi na konti. Yung, yung documents being requested by sir, Senator Antiveros. Sir, we can, we, we can share to, sir, we can share to you uh, the, the draft. We have already drafted an implementing rules and regulation on the policy we're espousing on ISF rental uh, subsidy. So, nandun po yung pinag-uusapan natin, sir, na track A and track B. And on the DOT or the RIC PMO, I think uh, it, it would be the same. Kasi nga, the, the, the RIC is under the DISUD. So, I think they, they would have the same uh, policy. Uh, proposed policy for the implementation of the DOT or the Build, Build, Build project, sir. So, yun po ang pwede namin. Thank you, sir. Yes. We oh, expect that uh, by next week, uh, Ms. Rowena. Yes, Senator oh. Antiveros, you can uh, proceed now. Salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, gusto ko rin lang in-note na alala ko ngayon, pinaalalahanan ako na uh, in fact, um, even rental, even long-term rental, uh, pwede nang i-consider na formal housing na rin yun. Ang importante ay sustainable dun sa formerly informal settler family. So ownership man o rental man yan, kung ano mang track iyan, uh, yun naman ang vision dapat ng housing sector and certainly vision ng uh, aming komite dito sa Senado under the chair. Uh, so, balikan ko lang po Mr. Chair uh, si GM Escalada para lang tapusin yung pagtatanong ko dun sa pangalawang tanong ko on project coverage. Uh, GM, 
uh, uh, vinalidate nyo nga ba a while ago na yung current practice po ay 18,000 pesos uh, subsidy in exchange for housing rights. Tama po ba yung nanote kong amount? 18,000 po ba yung nasabi nyo? GM? Yeah, I, I was informed, Madam Senator and your Chair, that the 18,000 that we gave is an initial entitlement na binibigay ng NHA sa lahat ng mga qualified beneficiaries from our ISFs living in Metro Manila, moving out to the provinces of Rizal, Batangas, uh, Bataan, and Laguna. Okay, sir. And then, unfortunately, in some areas, uh, hindi po yung desire natin yun, pero in some areas, current practice na itinuturing na yung 18,000 na iyon ay kapalit na ng any future housing rights. Uh, Mavavalidate nyo po ba yun na ganun ay current practice, at least in certain areas? No, no it's not, Your Honor. It's not it equivalent not. or it's not a wave of his or her rights the moment they acknowledge the 18,000. Okay. That's good to hear from you, uh, GM, na ang prinsipyo ng NHA ay hindi siya waiver ng housing rights kasi ibig sabihin may mga area po talaga uh, may uulat po ng mga informal settler communities na bagaman yan ang prinsipyo sa level ng key shelter agencies pero ang current practice ay ganun na po yung understanding na ine-enforce on the ground na yung 18,000 na iyon uh, hindi nga siya initial support lang pero itinuturing siyang in exchange of future housing right so isang area na uh, sa oversight namin sa Senado sa Kongreso and then sa uh, enforcement ninyo isang bagay na kailangan talagang i-correct uh, moving forward tapos uh, Mr. Chair GM kanina itatanong ko sana pang 2 years ba iyan pero sa presentation nyo kanina GM 5 years uh, kino contemplate iniisip ko ba kung ba 2 years pang 2 years ba dahil on average yun yung ganong katagal para magtayo ng housing project lalo na kung bago at in city at hindi pa uh, previously na simulan so 5 years nga ba or 2 years ba ano po yung time frame? Mr. Chair, I think the proposal is five years rental subsidy. Years. So based on our experience, Madam Senator and Mr. Chair, that for every 1,000 package, given the normalcy of project implementation where weather is good, where supplies are available, mm -hmm. where labor is readily available, the 1,000 units will be completed within the next 24 months. But it is subject to another 12 months, meaning three years, for extension and suspension of all the projects which are legitimate in nature as the basis for the suspension or extension. The, yeah. the allowance of two years more, Madam Chair and uh, Mr. Chair, is something that is a welcome development, not only to us, but practically to the beneficiaries, that indeed they shall be able to settle really on the fifth year and therefore mm -hmm. the five-year rental subsidy can be the best uh, number of years within which a, an assistance from government should be extended. Okay, noted po GM, Mr. Chair. Pero sige, balikan ko lang po at least yung uh, minimum of two years, 24 months. Um, gusto ko pang pag-usapan ito sa inyo kasi kung two years, salimbawa, ang value at, kunyari, 4,000 pesos a month, uh, for example, sa loob ng 24 months, halos 100,000 pesos na po iyon. Uh, or kung plus the 12 months during which yung suspension nangyayari, 36 months, so uh, halos 150,000 pesos. Hindi naman kaya mas maigi pa na gamitin na lang ito na pang down payment sa pag-ibig uh, para makabili ng housing mula sa pag-ibig housing stock, kalimbawa. Uh, I wonder, Mr. Chair, if NHA, what NHA thinks of that, and especially what Pag-ibig thinks of that. I think, uh, or Disud mismo, Mr. Mr. Chair. I think Pag-ibig is around. Yeah, they can reply. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Uh, may recognize Pag-ibig. Tapos sana Disud din po. Apo. Pag-ibig, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, can you identify uh, yourself? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. I am attorney Sir Roberto F. Po, uh, Deputy Legislative License Officer and Department Manager of the 
the legal department of Pag-ibig Panginoon. Go ahead, Panginoon. can you respond to the query of Senator Antiveros? And then ah, we'll yes, give uh, uh, NHA a chance to reply as well. Go ahead. Tapos sana diso din, Mr. Chair. Yes, okay. uh, Attorney Po. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, um, ma Madam, uh, uh, Madam Senator, uh, uh, Senate, Senate Bill Number 1227 and Senate Bill 1767 provides that uh, the Home Development Mutual Fund shall enable the beneficiaries to the HMF system so as to facilitate their entry to the formal housing market. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Chair, this provision is aligned with the fund's mandate to improve the quality of life of Filipinos through the, enhance through the enhancement of provident savings and home financing system. At present, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, well, we have our affordable housing program, uh, which has a low interest rate of as low as uh, 3%, Mr. Chair, for the first five years. And as uh, Pag-ibig Fund members, they can also avail of our uh, acquisition of acquired assets, Mr. Chair, which has substantial discounts given to uh, members, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as a Provident Savings Fund, uh, Pag-ibig Fund, uh, it's owned by the members, and so uh, the Pag-ibig Fund could extend its uh, housing loan uh, privileges, uh, both housing and uh, short-term loan programs, to its members. And so, uh, uh, allowing uh, the beneficiaries to enroll uh, with Pag-ibig Fund pursuant to Section 8C, mm -hmm. Senate Bill Number 1227 and 167, will allow them to avail of the benefits of being a Pag-ibig Fund member. Yes. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, yes, sorry, Attorney Po, please continue. Uh, uh, thank you, ma ma Mr. Chair, Madam. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity, uh, Mr. Chair, to also, to also raise with you a, the provision on Senate Bill Number 1843 on the rent refinancing loans by government financial institutions under of under Senate Bill 1843, which provides that uh, eligible members shall qualify for loans up to one year's worth of the member's mm -hmm. rent uh, in an amount not exceeding 200,000. Uh, this provision is addressed to the social security system, the government service insurance system, and Pagibig Fund. Uh, at present, Mr. Chair, uh, Madam Senator, the uh, housing loan uh, contributions of a Pagibig Fund member is only at uh, 100 pesos, the monthly mm -hmm. contribution, and the counterpart is 100. So for a period of uh, uh, two years, Mr. Chair, the uh, member has only contributed for a 4,800, and he, he will be allowed to avail of a rent refinancing loan of 200,000, uh, this will not be sustainable, Mr. Chair. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in fact, for a 20-year period, uh, a member who has contributed the minimum amount of 100 pesos will only have contributed a total savings of 48,000 pesos. And with the mm -hmm. dividends uh, uh, given by the fund or the interest, you will only have an, an amount of 76,920 pesos. And so, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this provision on rent refinancing loans as a uh, Will be a uh, will have a serious financial impact not only to the fund but also to our uh, co uh, in agencies uh, SSS and GSIS. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Mr. Chair, for the amount uh, uh, taking into account these uh, different accounting scenarios, uh, the maximum exposure of the fund would be around 414 billion, and while the minimum ex mm. exposure would be at 51 billion, uh, this will be a very significant amount which will exceed our. Uh, access, access available for the general fund program fund, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Um, with with the kind indulgence of the committee, may we request uh, your honor we uh, to be allowed to submit our position paper on on this matter, Mr. Chair. With the Thank you, Attorney Paul. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. It appears that Pagibig is uh, against the passage of the measure. Uh, were you able to relay your concerns during the lower house hearings? Uh, conducted by uh, Congressman Belmonte et al. Nabanggit yes, Mr. Chair. Ito? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, actually, uh, uh, we are amenable to uh, Senate Bill 8, 1227 and 1767, mm -hmm. section, uh, which provision on Section 8C, which provides for the uh, for entry of uh, the beneficiaries to the PAGIB fund market. However, mm -hmm. the new provision on uh, Senate Bill 1843 uh, is a new provision, Mr. Chair, which... Uh, 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 that is why we ra raised it for the first time. Uh, I believe this is not in the House bills uh, provided, uh, Sir Chair. Mm -hmm. This provision on the rent refinancing the measure loans. filed by Senator De Lima. For the measures filed by Senators uh, Bong Revilla and Bong mm -hmm. Bongo, okay, sa inyo yon. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Sir Chair. Uh, th I, I, this is also the same provision in uh, House Bill Number. Uh, 
House Bill number 8736, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. uh, which does not contain a provision on the rent refinancing loans, but only on the provision on the uh, entry of the beneficiaries to the Pag-ibig Fund. Uh, mm -hmm. As mentioned, Mr. Chair, uh, being Pag-ibig Fund members, they will now be able to avail of housing loan programs, both mm -hmm. uh, affordable housing and end user financing, and also the short-term loan programs, a calamity loan, multi-purpose loan, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and salamat din po, Attorney Po, sa inyong presentation at yung sagot nyo dun sa tanong ko kung i-welcome, kung amenable ang pag-ibig na yung uh, two or three years worth ng uh, public rental housing subsidy ay pwede na lang, pwede na lang gawing down payment uh, sa pag-ibig para kung yung long-term na plano ng pamilya ay hindi habang buhay mag -rent, bilang miyembro na rin ng formal housing sector pero makabili ng housing stock ay doon makabili sa sa stock ng um, ng pag-ibig. I think also attorney po yung isang epekto po niyan ay yung 100 or 150k na yon na ipapasok sa pag-ibig uh, ay hindi na kakailanganin yung budget na iyon na ilodge sa NHA kasi mukhang we, we therefore have a source of funding for public uh, rental housing. And Mr. Chair, interesting sa akin yung ganyang uh, observation based dun sa pag-intindi ko sa sagot ni Attorney po. kasi after all, yung committee natin wants to assist the housing sector na talagang patuloy na mag-evolve no? kung paano magsaluhan uh, sa mga tasks nila. And therefore also where each of the monies na inaappropriate natin sa Kongreso every year ay properly malodge para maximal, optimal ang performance ng buong sector at ng ba bawat agency sa loob niya, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator, yes ma'am, mas maganda, mas, kung tutusun naman, mas maganda po yun kasi mm. kung sa uh, mag-avail po sila ng uh, housing loan, uh, in the long run po, mapapapa sa kanila po yung, uh, yung property uh, mm. compared to a, a rental wherein uh, it will be an expense but if they will the members will avail of our affordable housing program to acquire yes. an acquired asset po uh, malaki po uh, discount uh, malaki po yung mabababa mabababa na po yung interest rate ng affordable housing may discount pa po sila sa pag uh, purchase mm. ng acquired asset so and malaki fact, po tulong po yun sa miyembro po opo oh and in fact attorney po parang magiging isang proxy yon no dagdag sa tracks A and B na pinag-uusapan natin kanina so maraming salamat po attorney po at sa uh, HDMF o pag-ibig uh, salamat po maraming salamat po Mr. Chairman thank you sir thank you, Mr. Mr. We'd, we'd like to have a brief uh, reactions coming from the Co presidential commission on urban poor Thereafter, the Urban Poor Associates, an NGO group, before we proceed to the other measure, uh, which is the extension of the National Housing Authority Charter. So, may we recognize the Presidential Commission Urban Poor, either Commissioner Norman Balo ba Loro Balovo or uh, Commissioner Mitra of the Urban Poor Commission. Uh, sino sa inyo magsasalita? Uh, ako po, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Mitra po. Melvin Mitra. Go ahead, yes, sir. sir. Uh, magandang umaga po, Mr. Chair, saka kay Senador Hontiveros. Ang posisyon po namin, Mr. Chair, una, sinusuportahan namin yung Senate Bill 1227 at, at uh, 1767. Pero may mga ilang specific provisions kaming gustong isusog. Una, dapat ang coverage ng bill ay limited lang sa mga affected families through court order demolition cases at administrative demolition cases. Kasi po, napakalaki po ng bilang ng informal settler families. At isa sa mga pangunahing problema po dyan ay yung walang central base na data na kung saan ma mabibilang talaga natin yung actual figures ng informal settlers. What we have is a documented pero malaking percentage din po, Mr. Chair, na paramihan sa mga informal settlers, a big chunk or a big percentage, hindi po nagpapabalidate at hindi po nagpapasensus and tagging. Pangalawa po, ang batay po sa Section 28 ng Republic Act 7279, 
magkaiba po ang location site bukod po ang financial assistance tuon sa pinag-uusapan po nating uh, rental subsidy. So automatic po 'yan na dapat may location site, may if may financial assistance sa mga affected families. Tapos ang position po namin kung wala pang relocation site na ready, doon po papasok lamang yung tinatawag nating rental subsidy na pwedeng ibigay ng gobyerno or ng iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno. Ikatlo po, uh, nangangamba po ang PCUP doon sa pagsasamantala ng mga professional squatting syndicate dahil wala nga po tayong malinaw na data kung ilan po talaga yung informal settler families na po yan. Actually, ang database po ng ISF ay karamihan na sa safekeeping po ng mga local government units, yung kanilang mga urban poor affairs office, pero hindi po lahat nagpapadocument. Ikaapat, Mr. Chair, uh, initingnan din po namin paano po yung mga condemned relocation sites Marami po tayong relocation sites ngayon na condemn na po ang mga building. Baka pwedeng yung mga tinransfer doon sa mga relocation sites na ang sabi ay itatransfer ulit ngayon o yung iba wala pong mapagtransferan, e bigyan din po ng rental subsidy. Kasi po maraming pinagawa po ang NHA na condemn na po ang mga building. Sana po makapag-avail din po yung mga informal settler families sa na nakatira dito. So, ikaapat nga po ang aming malinaw din na posisyon, uh, pwede lang mag-avail habang hindi pa tapos ang relocation site. So, nililimit lang po namin. Ang tingin namin, dapat po ilimit natin ang subsidy doon lang sa mga affected families ng administrative demolition cases tsaka yung court demolition cases po. Salamat, uh, Commissioner Mitra. Papasagutin natin ng NHA. Pero maliwanag po dito sa mga panukalang batas na ang NHA ang magsa-certify ng beneficiaries. Sila rin po ang gagawa ng master list base doon sa National Resettlement Program. And I agree with you na yung mga condemned properties, kailangan ilipat sila at sagutin, ng, sagut, sagutin yung rental subsidy habang wala pang permanent na relocation site sila. Siguro ang tinutukoy mo, familiar din ako, napasya lang ko nung araw yan, nung uh, Metro Manila chair pa ako, yung Bitas uh, tenement area na guguho na nun. Yung uh, delikado na sa lindol. Hindi ko alam kung, kung uh, may mga tao pa hanggang ngayon dyan sa area sa Tondo, yung tenement housing dyan. Siguro NHA ang makakasagot yan. But I agree with you. Pero dito sa panukalang batas na ito, Ami hawak lang ng master list, ang gagawa lang ng listahan na magse-certify is the National Housing Authority. Uh, J JM Escalada, you can reply and then we'll have the uh, the NGO group uh, Urban Poor Associates thereafter. Uh, go ahead, uh, JM Escalada. I'll, I'll respond to the to the latter, Your Honor. Uh, with respect to the Vitas Temporary Shelter, Your Honor, I think there are 5,000 families right now and in my in my experience, when I assume as GM, I am already, I was able to transfer and resettle them some 1,000 already as we speak right now. So we are gradually, there are still 4,000 families are on our left there, but we hope to clear because this is practically a disaster waiting to happen as well. So on, on, the, on the qualification or honor, I think we maintain our stand on, in relation to section five, that can be used to focus on the scope of rental subsidy program. We recommend specifying the ISF shall be eligible under the program and they shall be subject to eviction or demolition due to, number one, government infrastructure projects. I think that's very clear. Those that are recovered by the rental subsidy. Number two, government projects affecting danger zones or where, number three, permanently displaced by disaster from previous area of residence. So that is our position right now, Your Honor. So ibig sabihin ng GM Escalada, even without a court order or administrative order, you can implement this. Because, uh, for instance, if there is a calamity, 
You don't, you don't need a, with all due respect, you don't need a court order to be relocated. Nature will displace you, so to speak. That's, that's, correct. that's correct, Your Honor. So what about the proposal of the Presidential Commission Urban Poor that there has to be a court order? Hmm. Uh, a response? Kailangan pa ba yan? Mr. Chair, I think um, he's pertaining to a, a, a whole different set of, uh, ano, of relocatees. Uh, so, doon naman po sa usapin na yun, ang, ang aming position is kung if there will be a, a budget for it, why not? But it becomes a, also a challenge of budget planning, Mr. Chair, because the court orders, uh, we cannot really truly determine for planning purposes kung kailan lalabas yung evictions nun, Mr. Chair. They should. Associates, Urban Poor Associates, are you still around? Mr. Arwin Atentar, uh, senior organizer of this uh, uh, Urban Poor Associates. Nandito po ba kayo? Uh, yes, um, good morning po, Mr. Saan Chair. Po kayo? Can you raise your hand? Kasi ang dami, yung, ang dami nating ano, ID. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, sir go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, thank you po, sir. Uh, kami po sa Urban Poor Associates, uh, doon po sa napag-usapan kanina, um, nais ko lamang po sana magkaroon ng konting winaw po doon sa nabanggit ni Attorney Katigba from Pantawid Upa na nabanggit niya po kasi kanina na yung cost po nung uh, panukalang rental subsidy ay sa, maaaring kunin po doon sa uh, naka-allocate po na budget ng proponent ng infrastructure project for housing. Um, Gusto ko lamang pong anuhin, uh, punahin din po kasi yung, ano, yung panukala na yun dahil baka po makain din naman nung um, rental subsidy yung sanang uh, budget na nakalaan para po sa pagpapatayo ng permanent housing uh, ng mga apektadong beneficiaryo. Uh, sana po, um, kaya po napakahalaga po nga, kanina na pag-usapan na rin naman po na mahalaga po sana na magkaroon ng uh, parang distinction po no doon sa mga entitlements ng ng mga maapektuhan ng infrastructure projects gaya po nito uh, ng panukalang batas na merong separate entitlement for uh, rental subsidy at meron din po nabanggit din kanina yung sa right of way kasi doon po nagtutukoy din po doon ng entitlements para sa mga informal settlers na dapat po ay hiwalay pero karapatan din po ng mga ano at panghuli po yung karapatan sa sa permanenteng pabahay ng mga maapektuhan ng uh, ng mga infrastructure projects. At uh, isang ano na lang po panghuli na lang po doon sa kanina po nabanggit naman po ni uh, Director Dineros ng Dishud na yun uh, we welcome po yung kanilang openness to implement a uh, public rental housing program. Uh, pero nais ko lang din po sanang ano rin parang magbigay at least no ng konting ano rin parang uh, ano din na sana mapag-aralan po ng departamento na uh, sa, sa kasalukuyan po siguro uh, kailangan din tignan po yung um, yung supply po no kailangan po sana bago mag-implement ng isang public rental housing uh, program ay siguruhin po muna ng department na mag meron tayong robust supply ng affordable uh, rental housing units para sa mga kababayan natin. Uh, kasi po, delin niya, kung tayo ay mag-implement, pero kung napakamahal naman po ng mga uh, units na available, ay baka po hindi rin maging successful yung rental uh, public rental housing program na sinasabi. Yun lamang po. Maraming pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Before we, we conclude this and proceed to the other measure, may tanong po ako dun sa Urban Poor Associates and perhaps uh, they should can interject. Dalawang tanong po. Una, ito pong pangkasalukuyang COVID-19 pandemic, do we have figures that can show how many were displaced within Metro Manila only because of non-payment of rentals because of job losses, unemployment, etc. due to COVID-19. And number two, perhaps the NHA can answer, do you have a database that would perhaps answer the question of uh, the urban poor associates that this is probably, according to what I heard, uh, this is probably uh, a situation wherein we do not we do not have yet 
the infrastructure to enable us to assist displaced lessees. Ang tanong ko, ganito na, diretsahin ko na, yung bang mga pinagawang bahay na nakikita natin minsan sa Bulacan, minsan sa papunta na ng Central Luzon, Pampanga area, hindi po ba pwedeng paupahan muna yon habang wala pang permanent occupants? Paupahan doon sa madidisplace dito sa Metro Manila o kung saan man, uh, bahagi ng uh, rental program kasama na yung subsidiya, hindi kanila, hindi magiging kanila pa pero pauupahan kaysa naman nakatiwangwang na bakante. Yun yung pangalawang tanong. Yung, yung unang tanong, uh, nabanggit ko na rin, directed to to Dishod Bayon. Perhaps uh, the gentleman can answer my uh, twin queries. Thank you. Mr. Chair, dito po sa usapin ng uh, displacement of uh, due to COVID, uh, hindi pa po namin masyadong napag-aralan ito. Um, tinignan po namin, uh, kasi naglabas po kami ng mga amortization sa tsaka, mga amortization na uh, moratorium eh, Mr. Chair. So, doon po sa on the part of the public sector housing, medyo na STEM ito. Uh, that I can assure. I don't have the numbers. Medyo na, medyo na? na STEM. Na hindi ito masyado na apektuhan yung because of the COVID. Because we we came out with department orders for amortization uh, reprieves. reprieves. Pero, pero yung binibigay po ng pamahalaan na ayuda ay para po yun sa pagkain o sa mga basic necessities. Wala po naman natanggap yung ating mga kababayan na ayuda para doon sa kanilang pangbayad sa upa. Yes, Di yes, so, paano niya nasabi Ang, na, na STEM? Yes, sir. Wala lang kami, sir, data doon sa private sector. Hindi pa namin, sir, nasili po iyon. Yung sa aming public housing programs, uh, either run by the SHFC, NHA, or uh, HDMF, we came out with department orders na during the the COVID-19 pandemic, no ECQ, ECQ, MECQ, meron po kaming mga moratoriums na nilalabas po, Mr. Chair. These are all being followed. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, now, in relation dun sa binabanggit, sir, naman ng UPA, uh, the, the rental subsidy is not a standalone project, Mr. Chair. We are also piloting now uh, a Balay Housing Rental Development Program para naman po maboy yung ating inventory. We are now partnering with LGUs, NGAs, SUCs. Babagsakan po, uh, yung, basta po may lupa sila, papartneran po namin sila ng, uh, ng funding so that we can also increase rental housing stock, Mr. Chair. My, my second question, siguro si Jem Escalada, Yung mga bakante na ginawang pabahay ng NHA na hindi pa natitirahan, pwede ba itong paupahan muna pansamantala para may nakatira, nagagamit, at the same time yung mga gusto ng lumipat sa umalis doon sa kanilang kinatatayuan ngayon, eh may, ma may mapuntahan sila as part of this uh, rental housing subsidy program. May program ba tayo naisip na gano'n? Jem Escalada. Thank you, Your Honor. Actually, right after March of 2018, Your Honor, when the Senate as well as Congress gave me the authority to reaward the unoccupied and uh, unawarded units pursuant to the so-called invasion of Kadamay. Right after that, Your Honor, we can no longer see uh, housing that are not uh, awarded. So I'm referring to that the 55,000 nationwide inventories, and particularly in Bulacan, Pampanga, are already awarded right now. And these are awarded not anymore to the original beneficiaries of APPNP, but to the government officials, government functionaries, barangay officials, and the IESFs living in a particular uh, jurisdiction or territory. Uh, it would be impossible right now, Your Honor, to have it offered as a rental or lease on a temporary basis because award has been issued and there is already initial payment or installation amortization of 200 pesos made by our awardees. The only setback is that they haven't physically occupied yet. So it may appear not occupied, but in documents, they are already fully awarded, Your Honor, as a result of the joint resolution number two of 2018. Oh, ganun nga yun na, na po na ko, GM Escalada, because last week, umikot po tayo ng, ng Kabite, uh, General Trias, uh, Naik, Presi Martires, marami po tayong nakita na, na pabahay, hindi ko alam kung NHA yan, pero pare-pareho yun. Uh, na konti lang po yung nakita ko may nakasampay, may nakaparadan sa sakyan. So ang tingin ko, bakante pa. 
So ang sinasabi nyo ngayon, maari ito na big na award na sa iba. So with more reason, with more reason, the, there is now a greater impetus for us to proceed with a rental housing subsidy program because if these are not occupied and these are these were already awarded, the awardees can now be the lessors to those willing to relocate outside Metro Manila. So in effect, they earn, they provide a, a housing uh, a housing structure for the relocates. At the same time, hindi bakante, hindi nakatiwangwang. Kumikita pa sila. So with, with all due respect, marami po ako nakita na, na kung na-award nyo na yun, eh, pero bakante pa. Marami namang nangangailangan ng pabahay na nagsisiksikan pa sa sa Metro Manila. So, how, how do Mr. we... Mr. Chair? Of this? Uh, yes, Senator Tavera. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, gusto ko pong suportahan yung uh, observation at concern ng uh, Chair. Kaya pwede po ba, Mr. Chair, na si GM Escalada ay i-provide sa komite natin through the Chair yung documentation nung mga magre-rent ng uh, bawat isa sa 55,000 unoccupied houses para nga ma makita natin alin ba talaga ang nakontrata na sa mga LGUs at alin ay actually available pa para sa public rental housing, Mr. Chair. James Calada, 55,000 ba talaga na nakabakante yun o na-award? Ano ba yung status? Prior to the 2018, March of 2018, Your Honor, there were 55,000 inventories unoccupied. But right after the resolution number to giving me the authority to reaward the unoccupied, unawarded, it reduced already to 3,800 only right now. The... So, 3,000 na lang po ang bakante. That's right, Your Honor. We would like to welcome the arrival and presence physically of Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. And so, Mr. Senator Chair? 2000... Yes, Senator Antiveros. Therefore, Mr. Chair, pwede pong hingiin kay GM Escalada i-masubmit sa komite yung documentation ng original 55,000 at yung natitirang 3,800 at uh, sino po yung magre-rent ng uh, 52,000 or so na ano na uh, i-rent out through the LGUs. Awarded na yun, Your Honor. Awarded and paid already. Started paying the amortization. The, the 3,000, Your Honor, is the only unawarded, unoccupied. And my policy right now, Your Honor, is that uh, we go back to another inventory and whoever is interested to get the 3,800 nationwide, that is where we will award the unoccupied, the unawarded 3,800 remaining units, Your Honor. Understood po, GM, Mr. Chair. So para lang i, i, tawag nito, idugtong yung original database na alam natin na 55,000 at yung kasalukuyang 3,800. So yun po yung uh, ni-revise ko po yung request ko Mr. Chair na makapag-submit ng documentation uh, si GM uh, para dun sa sino na nga po na awardan at nagbabayad na ng rent dun sa 52,000 or so. Uh, and then yon para uh, ma, ma uh, alam natin na yung 38 na lang ang ang natitira pa Mr. Chairman. Thank you uh, Senator Antiveros. Siguro ma-comply ni Jen Escalada. Idugtong ko dun sa pangalawang tanong ko. Uh, tinatanong din siguro nung iba, bakit maraming na-award na bahay ng NHA kung na-award na yung 52,000 na bakante pa? Bakit uh, hindi pa ino-occupy ng mga beneficiaries? Hindi ito katulad ng napakagandang housing program sa Valenzuela na meron silang, uh, kisa na Senator Gatchalian, meron pa silang kooperatiba na sila yung nagmimaintain ng housing uh, project sa City of Valenzuela. So bakit po maraming na-award na nakatiwangwang pa? So ano po ba yung polisiya pag ikaw ay naging beneficiary? Hindi po ba dahil kailangan-kailangan mo ng pabahay Eh bakit ayaw mo tirahan? Kung ayaw mong tirahan, ang binabanggit ko kanina, eh paupahan mo na lang doon sa nangangailangan. So, ano po yung dahilan dito, GM Escalada? Bakit ayaw pa nila tirahan yung na-award na sa kanila na di umano, sabi mo, nabayaran na rin naman? 
Two things, Your Honor. Number one, the first award was made by the boards of AAPPNP. So the award was made by the PNP Regional Office and AFP Central Office. So in short, our soldiers and police officers didn't even know where the awards were at that time. They only later realized that a police officer from Pampanga got an award in, in Ilocos. An Army Soldier Sergeant of Ilocos got an award in Maguindanao. So that is the very reason, Your Honor. That is why they haven't occupied physically their awards. But they cannot also uh, withdraw that because nasasayangan sila doon sa opportunity to get one. But right now, as we speak, Your Honor, my policy is this, and I have made this clear to all our regions already. Right after the March of 2018, if no one occupies and no one seems to live in a particular site, we will automatically cancel the award and re-award it to whoever is interested to get the award. So, yung suggestion mo kanina, Your Honor, and Madam, Secret Madam Senator, is that whoever is interested right now and whoever is the actual awardee or actual beneficiary that do not actually occupy is automatically cancelled as a matter of policy by my management at NHA right now. Mr. Chair. We, ang deadline ng cancellation? Uh, we had the deadline, I think that was... Is this a threat or is this a... Um, that, it was already a, a pronouncement, Your Honor. Yeah, it was already... The award kahit na. nakabayad na sila. That's right. Yung, yung nakabayad na, Your Honor, uh, we continue to collect from them. Pang hindi pa nakabayad but awarded to them, we cancel the award. Pa, paano kung bayad ng bayad? Ayaw naman i-occupy. Uh, that becomes a private property, Your Honor, right now because the payment is tendered before is automatic uh, salary deduction by both the EFP as well as the PNP. Hindi ba pwedeng ibigayin muna sa mga teachers, public school teachers, di ba? Actually, Your Honor, that, SWs. Yeah, that, that was the, the, the essence of Joint Resolution Number 2. So right after March of 2018, we gave the unawarded, the unoccupied Sir, to the 2021 teachers. Ah. That's right, Your Honor. Uh, naiwan na lang na sa atin is 3,800 of the 55,000. So we are open to any uh, persons interested for the 3,800 nationwide. Isama mo na yan sa rapon. Mr. Chair. Uh, go ahead, Senator Antibero. At salamat po, Mr. Chair. Follow up lang po. Of the 51,200 na na-award, binabayaran, ilan po ang for cancellation dahil hindi ino-occupy after March 2018? Since they have already paid your honor, NHA is not in a position to cancel it until there is a violation of our of our policy on non-payment of amortization. But if there is regular deduction via monthly salary deduction and remittances have been given by both AP and PNP, PNP to us. So there's no way your honor, even though not occupied, that we can cancel the award because it's paid. Oh, understood po. Kaya lang kasi na, may nabanggit kayong cancellation kanina. So, uh, baka ilan po na dahil sa non-payment ang due for cancellation out of the 51,200 na na-award? We will furnish the Committee Your Honor of a copy. Salamat po, GM. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Last question before I ask uh, Senator uh, Gatchalian if he has a question. Can NHA devise a policy that even if you have fully paid a housing project constructed and financed by the government, if you have yet to occupy, occupy it and have not occupied it for three years, for instance, can NHA just return a reasonable amount of the payment made, 30%, 40%, and thereafter reaward that to another more uh, needy beneficiary needing a housing uh, structure from NHA. Because we, we consider this as a public good. And as a public good, it has to benefit the general public. And if it is not occupied, even though you consider it as a public property, it deviates from the original purpose of benefiting the homeless. Yung urban poor na nangangailangan ng bahay. Baka naman bibumili, nag-invest lang, 
hinihintay yung pagkakataon na ibenta, can't, can't we have an administrative encumbrance on whatever award that you give? That failure to occupy this for three years after the award will redound to the reawarding of said unit to another qualified beneficiary, but we will give you, we will return to you 40% or 45% of whatever amount you have fully amortized to the government. So in a way, you open up the doors for other needy uh, families. Hindi pa pwedeng gano'n. Otherwise, parang nag, parang nag, nag gumastos tayo. Nabayaran nga, pero ang, ang pangit tingnan yung isang pabahay na wala ka man lang nakitang nakaparadang sasakyan o damit na nakasampay. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi na pakinabangan. I would rather have a housing uh, unit, uh, 35, 40 square meters, which is teeming with people. Nandun na yung mga apo, pinakikinabangan, because na, 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 nagamit bilang isang uh, komunidad kesa naman nakatiwangwang. Any response before I, I give the floor to Senator Gatchalian? Your Honor, I am doubly happy with that proposal. In fact, I... I'm very pleased to have heard it coming from you. Uh, the the very reason why NHA cannot evict is because there is no in our own in our own original charter that the power to evict even for the non-payment. Because according to the philosophy, the moment NHA evicts, it adds on to another homelessness in the other side of the of the gap. But here in our proposed charter, we are very aggressive to to observe the non-payment as well as non-occupancy, Your Honor, particularly non-occupancy, because we feel, in fact, I have already made a, a memorandum circular, that if and when the original beneficiary does not occupy, therefore, the actual need of housing is no longer there, and henceforth, he no longer ceased to be qualified to a particular public housing. So, ang sinasabi ko ngayon, Your Honor, and members of the committee, is that, my, my instruction was to cancel the award because kumikita pa si original award, Your Honor. Our housing project is only 250, 300, 500 per month and they are renting it out at 3,000, 4,000 by other persons interested occupying. The moment we realize, because when I asked them, Your Honor, based on my narratives, I went there, who are renters? Nobody raised the, the, the arms. But when I said, if you admit that you are the renter, I will cancel the original award because the need of housing is no longer there. You need the housing. So I cancel the award and you pay there because he is willing to pay your owner 3,000 to the beneficiary. You pay to me 500 pesos and you get the 2,500 as your savings. So as a matter of policy, we will incorporate that your owner. And actually on the ground, we are doing it right now. But we will formalize that in our proposed charter for 2025 to 2075. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair. I, I just have some basic questions, GM. No? Kasi, uh, I encountered this when I was a mayor. In fact, uh, it's always been a problem, yung eviction. Because once they invoke that they have uh, already paid, uh, it, for example, they've paid uh, one year and then they don't pay. Uh, they will fight till the death, eh? uh, rather than being evicted, no. And uh, and, and literally, meron talagang death ng ah, uh, in that eviction. So, uh, my my question is, uh, uh, because I've been reading the the some of the bills that will be tackled today, no. And part of it is the rental um, subsidy concept, no. I think this is akin to the model that Valenzuela is using, the public rental housing. Uh, right now, kasi NHA builds, builds diba? the houses, no? Um, and then it builds based on uh, certain demands, no? In this case, I think it's AFP and PNP, no? But is it, isn't it more, uh, I guess, more flexible in the part of, on the part of government if it's market-driven, no? For example lang, I'm just thinking out loud. No? Um, for example lang, uh, 1,000 policemen. So okay, we will uh, subsidize your rental no? or subsidize uh, your uh, uh, purchase of homes. 
and then let the market decide where to build the homes, where they want to go. Because I heard you earlier that some of our policemen, they're from another place, but their homes or the, the, the houses that are allocated to them are, are located somewhere else. Tama po ba, uh, GM? That was the practice before your honor. That's why I have changed it, that the application will be on a regional basis. Wherever our police officers and soldiers are stationed, then they can apply there. But you, but you mentioned earlier that some of them are in, for example, Metro Manila and the the homes allocated to them are in Ilocos, tama po ba? That's correct, Your Honor. Especially for the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Are they from Ilocos? No, Your Honor. They so just will, got... Why will they relocate to Ilocos? Actually, the award was automatic, Your Honor, by the board. That is why we have changed. There is the, the boards, the EFP board and the PNP board. And awards are 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 handled by them, managed by them. So our soldiers are just surprised whenever they get already the house, the block and block, where... But they are they... Uh, did they have a chance to decide where to be... Uh, where to be housed? Or did they get any opportunity to choose the location of their homes? Uh, right now, Your Honor, there is already but the before, freedom to choose. Before, it was the board of the EAP and PNP. So, la landing na lang sa'yo, for example, you're from Metro Manila, la landing na lang sa'yo, your allocation is in Ilocos. That's right, Your Honor. So, obviously, they will not, uh, for example, they don't have any plans of relocating, they will not occupy those houses. Correct, Your Honor. So, in other words, the government spent already, but the beneficiary uh, doesn't want to leave Metro Manila or go to that allocation. That's correct, Your Honor. So, then say I'm changing the policy right now that applications are not lodged before the boards of both AP and PNP applications will be dodged before the regional office of NHK. But how did that I think that defeats uh, common sense and logic. How can you force someone to relocate to another place? Yeah, I fully agree, Your Honor. So pa pa in other words, paano nangyari yun? I mean the boards are supposed to be con composed of intelligent people but yeah. Seems to me that those type of uh, actions are not uh, logical. Yeah. It started in 2012, Your Honor, when the APPNP projects uh, came about and the awards were made centrally and regionally. Yeah. Well, on a, on a separate note, uh, GM, my question earlier, is it possible to be market-driven? For example, you're a soldier. I'll give you X amount. Bahala ka na mag maghanap kung saan gusto mong maghanap. At least it's my desire where to relocate. It's my desire what type of homes I can either apply for, let's say, a rental method or a, let's say, a, uh, a financing method or a subsidy method. Bahala na ako. Is that a possible model? Yeah. So that government will be... I, I'm, I'm trying to veer away from government investing and putting up the homes. Eh. That's it's expensive and, and operationally, it's very difficult. Yeah. Actually, you know, that can be possible because NHA has two full mandates. One is financing and the other one is production. We can continue to produce according to our work program and target, but we can also continue to finance whatever is the individual or collective desires of our market. As you've said, the market-driven type of housing project. Uh, yeah. Which one do you see more successful? Is it the financing method or the production method? Uh, right now, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, it's in the production. I think around 10% would avail of the financing. Because uh, for one, for financing, you must have your own land to buy for yourself. So, or you will have your own lands already titled in your name. So the amenities as well as the other land development components may not be present compared to a full subdivision that the production NHA is doing right now. Uh, for market driven, I can speak right now, uh, Your Honor. Uh, I have already signed a memorandum of understanding and agreement with the Dole because a very good market for OFW can be a very good uh, revenue generating activity for NHA. So that is a market driven, market demand housing projects. Right now, there are 27 applicants, tw uh, 27,000 applicants worldwide, Your Honor, applying to our website, and we only have 25,000. So that would mean a very good market already for the next few years.
lastly, Mr. Chair, I'd like to support the the public rental housing concept, no? because uh, uh, it gives government a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, evictions, in terms of um, um, financing. No? Public rental housing, in a, in a sense, is financing, eh? no? because you don't amortize the depreciation and you don't amortize the other costs. No? uh the other fixed cost so in other words it's easier for government because you only pay rent no which is variable cost um I, I, I want to support the public rental housing because i think that's in, in my in our experience in valenzuela it's a fastest faster way of um uh, giving um homes to our informal settler uh, communities Although tenure, there's no tenure there, no. But then again, the uh, concept there is, at one point uh, when their lives uh, improve, they will eventually buy their own home somewhere else, no. So it's really a temporary uh, uh, support that government gives uh, through rental, in order for them to be plucked out of the informal settler um, environment to a a homeowner or a home. Uh, subdivision environment. So I'd like to push that and I hope the NHA can look at that concept. Uh, we have a thriving model in Valenzuela. Um, uh, if we can, uh, I mean, we're open to tweaking that. No, I know you guys are the experts, but uh, that model can be, if that model can be replicated nationwide, no? so we can address the, uh, uh, the housing needs of our informal settler communities. So, uh, Senator Gachalian, indeed, the experience of Valenzuela City would show that Senator Gachalian uh, would qualify as our best housing secretary. Uh, if ever he, he, and he, can, he can even be a chair of the advisory board of the NHA. Ang, ang ganda ng concepto nila. So, I think uh, uh, without objection on the part of our colleagues here, uh, Senator Marcos cannot join us virtually because She's having uh, a link problem. The same is true with Senator Bongo. We can uh, proceed with the with the TWG of, of, of this measure because this is needed uh, during this pandemic stage. And this is likewise needed as we move towards the post-pandemic uh, period. But we have to have more data, uh, especially coming from the urban poor. Uh, in terms of the number of uh, indigents displaced here, not just here in Metro Manila, but in other urban centers. So without objections on the part of my colleagues here, uh, the measures under consideration would be uh, referred to a TWG prior to the preparation of a committee report. And I'm referring to Senate Bill 1843, Senate Bill 1767, Senate Bill 1227, and the TWG, uh, Take Note Secretariat, should be done in the presence of our House counterparts, Congressman Jose Belmonte, Precious Castello, uh, Congressman John Marvin Nieto, Johnny Pimentel, uh, Congressman Villapuerte, and others. So without objections, we now proceed to a TWG prior to the preparations of a committee report. We now go to the other measure to be tackled, and this is the proposal to extend the charter of the National Housing Authority. Uh, th this is quite uh, complicated uh, for the information of Senator Gachalian. The NHA's charter would expire 2025. And you would want now to have that extended uh, and several new features not included in the existing charter are now being proposed. Uh, these are the measures coming from uh, Senators Bongo, Senator uh, yours truly, and Senator Lapid, and Senator Marcos. So I understand uh, GM, you have a short presentation for the extension of the NHA 
Charter. Uh, Mr. Deputy, Chairman. Yes, uh, Senator Gachalian. Uh, Senator Ontiveros, I'm sorry. It's all right, Mr. Chairman. If the presiding officer would allow, bago po yung presentation ng NHA General Manager, may this uh, representation, this committee member, be allowed to make uh, a brief manifestation for the record, Mr. Chair? Uh, go ahead, uh, Senator Ontiveros. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. At uh, muli magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Uh, I would like to assert the observation uh, with all due respect, Mr. Chair, dear colleagues, that the consideration of the NHA Charter renewal is uh, premature, not only because of what the Chair reminded us of na actually yung Charter ay due for renewal sa 2025 pa, but additionally, I would like to refer uh, the attention of the Chair and our other members of the committee to Section 29 of the IRR of RA 11201, which says that we recently mandated the DSUD to remove the overlaps, redefine the roles, and restructure the organizations of the key shelter agencies. I'm hoping, uh, Mr. Chair, with all due respect, that we will not put the cart before the horse. Uh, the Chair may wish to consider uh, deferring consideration of these bills or phasing the consideration to uh, a later month uh, until the DSUD has given us the big picture of how the housing sector will be reconfigured under the leadership of the Secretary. I believe, or this representation believes, Mr. Chair, that the NHA Charter is best extended and reformulated in the context of a clear restructuring plan from DSUD and even GCG. Sa tingin ko po, Mr. Chair, kailangang mag-present muna ang DSUD Secretary sa gabay ng GCG ng kanilang restructuring plan para sa key shelter agencies as mandated by RA 11201. The division of labor among the shelter agencies and the role of each one, including the NHA itself, should align with the restructuring plan. And first and for the record, and so that we are all reminded, I would just like to enter into the record, Mr. Chair, uh, Section 29 of the IRRs of uh, RA 11201, uh, which treats of the restructuring uh, of the attached uh, corporations, um, uh, in including eliminating overlaps, if any, identifying functions and programs of corporations, uh, clarifying the role of each corporation along the housing value chain, and strengthening the integration of functions, programs, and services among the corporations and the department. Secondly, Mr. Chair, uh, housing is one of the devolved functions under the Local Government Code. Beginning 2022, with the rollout of the second devolution, which was prompted by the Mandanas ruling, LGUs will be under the supervision of the DILG, uh, specifically the Bureau uh, Local Government Supervision, to perform mandates under the LGC, UDHA, and the DRR law. The DBM and the DILG expect the LGUs to play a bigger role in the coming years. Many of the roles presently performed by the NHA, such as the identification of resettlement sites, coordination with the agencies like DOTR, DPWH, and DENR that need to resettle, master planning of sites under presidential proclamations will now need to be shared with the LGU. So finally, uh, Mr. Chair, we have to see, I suppose, how this second devolution might make certain NHA functions unnecessary and therefore how the agency will need to reinvent itself. So again, with all due respect at marami salamat uh, sa allowance ng Chair for the record, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Thank you, Senator Antiveros. Uh, before the Chair reacts, I I'd like to uh, have Senator Gachalian, who is uh, physically present here, make uh, his comment likewise. Well, Mr. Chair, um, uh, I thank uh, Senator Risa for uh, pointing that uh, very important uh, procedure out. 
uh, definitely uh, there are uh, pointers that we need to uh, put in mind. For number one is the uh, analysis of DSUD uh, in terms of uh, streamlining, consolidating, as well as removing all the overlaps. Admittedly, when um, all of these housing uh, key shelter uh, agencies were uh, put under one roof, uh, we need to make sure that there are no overlaps so that uh, we promote efficiency. However, Mr. Chair, uh, in the spirit of uh, open discussion, um, may I suggest that we can discuss concepts of these bills, um, discuss since the um, management of NHC is already here, no? um, and uh, we can have a preliminary discussion on the concepts uh, preliminary discussion on the goals and the benefits of these proposals. Um, and then um, we will leave it to the chair's wisdom to decide uh, how to pursue uh, the next course, meaning do we uh, invite other um, uh, stakeholders, including DSUD, to uh, report uh, on those uh, comments on uh, Senator Risa, and then uh, we will also decide how if we will pursue the uh, the uh, further deliberation of this bill. So, in other words, Mr. Chair, uh, we can talk about concepts today, uh, talk about it in a uh, preliminary manner, and then uh, decide later on. Uh, I mean, you decide, no, as the chairman, uh, whether to. Um, uh, uh, delay the discussion of this bill subject to a further discussion or the, or the other decision is um, uh, to pursue this bill no? if, if the preliminary discussion yielded to uh, merits to, uh, to, to, uh, to further, uh, uh, to further to tackle this bill, Mr. Chair. I submit to the wisdom of the chair. Thank you, Senator Gachalian. I, I, I think there is merit on the manifestation of Senator Antiveros that uh, since this would uh, expire on 2025, uh, we're still 2021, and we have here the presence of the should, they can perhaps uh, explain the, the consequences of that IRR cited by Senator Antiveros. I uh, also agree with the the manifestation of Senator Gachalian that uh, we can have a preliminary discussion of this mesh, the measures here, but this will form part, an integral part of the deliberation of the bill. Uh, definitely, we will not be able to finish this today uh, at this point in time because this is a uh, how many pages? Bato, mahabahaba to, and we're talking of a charter that would last for 25 years. But for the record. And Senator Gachalian is very familiar with this, uh, having served as a very capable chairman of the Committee on Energy, uh, which is at the forefront right now in, in, in combating and battling uh, the periodic brownouts that we have. Uh, we have a precedent before. The National Power Corporation, the charter of the National Power Corporation was approved November 3, 1936, through Commonwealth Act 120. It was supposed to expire, it was supposed to expire 1986. But a revised charter of the National Power Corporation was passed on September 9, 1971, under Republic Act 6395, extending the life of NPC the National Power Corporation to year 2036, even before its, its expiry date on 1986. So there is a precedent here. But since Senate, Senator Antiveros argued for the, uh, the compliance requirements that should be given by the should, uh, since the should is a new enabling uh, act, Perhaps we can all reconcile this through the suggestion of Senator Gachalian that we transform this into a preliminary uh, committee discussion as, as to the merits of extending the life of uh, 
NHA, taking into consideration what would happen next year when the Mandanas ruling is fully implemented, empowering the LGUs to implement several housing uh, programs through their windfall in resources. So, wala naman tayo nasayang na oras dito. Uh, you make your presentation, everything will be part of the records. We will not be duplicitous when we go to a next hearing, but definitely we will not finish it today. So we will we will uh, hear the presentations coming from NHA. We will uh, hear the the responses coming from the land bank, Pag-ibig, and uh, another, another financial institution, GSIS, GSIS, and then we wrap it up for today. All part of the records of this uh, deliberations. But definitely, we took into consideration the manifestations of Senators uh, Honteberos, very relevant and timely, and Senator uh, Gachalian, a win-win solution uh, coming from his uh, own moniker. So, uh, NHA, you have the floor for your five-minute, three to five minutes presentation, and thereafter we'll have GSIS, uh, SSS, and Pag-ibig. And for the record, I submit, Mr. Chair, at marami salamat po, Mr. Chair, at Sen. Sherwin. Dagang salamat. So, NHA and the other agencies, we thank you for your presence. Baka hindi na namin matanong ang, ang uh, DNR, DILG, and the rest, uh, DBM. But uh, thank you for your uh, attendance. And we hope to receive your position papers on this. NHA, you have the floor. GM is Galat. I will make my second statement, Your Honor, after the Secretary of this should shall be able to give his message. Yeah, I will Thank refer. You, I will give my opening statement, Your Honor, after the Secretary of this should. Mr. Chair, uh, first of all, apologies that uh, our secretary cannot be physically present today. He also has. So, uh, this is in response to the query of Senator Antiveros. I, I, can, I can also make a comment on that before reading the opening statement of our secretary, Eduardo Del Rosario. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with, uh, with regard to the comment uh, pertaining to Section 22 of RA 11201, we acknowledge that uh, the DHSUD is mandated to make a study in uh, connection, in coordination with the GCG in relation to its attached agencies, namely the NHA, the HDMF, SHFC, NHMFC, and the HSAC. Unfortunately, um, it hasn't uh, made so much progress on that, uh, on that point because the department continues to go through its own transition peer, uh, process, Mr. Chair. In fact, um, for the information of the committee, uh, we haven't yet filled our, uh, our plantilla, uh, Mr. Chair, and thus preventing us from doing the JCG study as mandated by RA 11201. And then also something very crucial as this is actually quite hard to do, Mr. Chair, in the context of, an, of a pandemic. We just experienced the transition of merging two agencies, the HLURB and the HUDCC, and it has gotten us maybe two years already and we haven't actually finalized the transfer of assets some plantilla positions are still uh, being transferred some people are still uh, jumping from uh, h what used to be hudcc uh, hlurb to what is now hsac so it, it's it, it is a very tedious process mr. mr chair nonetheless the same section 22 of ra 11201 second paragraph thereof Acknowledges. Yeah, sec, do you have a presentation? Uh, something appeared on the, sl uh, the screen. Is that part of your presentation? No, sir. Ah, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. To wrap up, sir. Um, the second paragraph of Section 22 of RA 11201 acknowledges our attached corporations and that they should continue to function according to the existing laws and the respective charters, Mr. Chair. And if we are to do any streamlining, merger, or, uh, or any movement of our KSAs, the department does not foresee a situation wherein there will be no NHA. On the other hand, we foresee a situation where we have a stronger NHA in our public housing sector. With that, Mr. Chair, I can, if I can proceed 
to the opening statement of our Secretary. To the Honorable Chairperson of the Committee on Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement, Senator Francis N. Tolentino, and our uh, Senator uh, Ontiveros, who is uh, virtually present, uh, and other, other members of this committee, in behalf of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, I would like to thank the Senate for this opportunity to present the agency's position on various legislative bills, all pertaining to the National Housing Authority Act of 2021. Since its creation in 15 October 1975, by virtue of Presidential Decree Number 757, signed by former President Ferdinand Edrelin Marcos, the National Housing Authority has relentlessly played a significant role in the government's constitutional mandate to undertake a continuing program of urban land reform and housing, which will make available at affordable cost, decent and sustainable housing and services to underprivileged and homeless citizens in urban centers and resettlement areas. Given the NHA's steady and substantial contribution to the public housing sector for the period 2016-2021, it is but fitting that the department manifests its full support to the passage of the National Housing Authority. In fact, based on our accomplishment report, the National Housing Authority from the period 2016 to 2021 has produced 274,689 units of socialized and low-cost housing in the country. This significant number of housing units produced by NHA, of course, generated employment in the construction industry. From the foregoing data, we see no reason why the NHA's corporate term should be left to expire. Through the years, it has led the public housing sector in direct shelter production, accounting for more than 25% of actual output. Of late, the NHA has also been at the forefront of disaster response while also making their products more resilient. It has also ventured into serving the underserved sector, which includes low-salaried government employees through its Government Employees Housing Program, or the GEHP. The department has identified that one of the ways by which the country's housing backlog could be effectively addressed is to further, the, further strengthen the NHA as the primary government agency engaged in direct shelter production and accordingly extend its corporate life. The NHA has also constantly buoyed our shelter production and supports our housing advocacy of building adequate, livable, affordable, and inclusive Filipino communities. With respect to the department's comments, we will uh, discuss that. We have prepared separate discussion notes with that which we will dis dis discuss at the technical working group level. Again, we sincerely, sincerely appreciate the opportunity given to the department to take part in this committee hearing, it is the department and its key shelter agencies ardent aspiration that the committee will favorably consider the passage of the proposed bills at the soonest possible time and erase any or any any doubt as to the existence and uh, mandates and uh, programs of the authority. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good issue. Uh, a short presentation coming from NHA. Before we have uh, brief responses from GSIS, SSS, and who's the other one? Pagibig. And before we suspend consideration of this, uh, James Calada, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, allow me to greet everyone. Thank you very much for having us, the NHA, right now, and also allowing us to get at least 15 or 10 minutes of your time, Your Honor for presenting our proposed charter. Allow us to begin by thanking everyone for taking up today the matter of the various bills on strengthening the National Housing Authority and extending its corporate term. The NHA was created in 1975, uh, 45 years ago, through a presidential decree 757, with a noble goal to undertake housing development and resettlement activities to provide housing to every Filipino as the government's direct housing production arm. Today. We are very proud, Your Honor, and members of the committee, that close to 2 million housing units have been produced by NHA for the past two decades, for the past four decades. The, the, the NHA has implemented various enhanced housing programs under a strategic trust of building a culture of quality, such as our resettlement sites, ISF on danger areas, ISFs affected by government infrastructure projects, ISFs affected by Supreme Court mandamus on the Manila Bay. The regional resettlement to include, among others, the Settlement Assistance Program for LGUs, the RAP LGU, the Indigenous Peoples Government Housing Housing Projects or Programs to include the EPPNP Housing and the Housing Program for Calamity Victims and the Settlement Upgrading. 
Through our programs, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, thousands of families have become beneficiaries of government housing. Informal settler families displaced by infrastructure projects or relocated from danger areas have gained security of tenure in well-designed communities. Households devastated by disasters have been given safer shelters wherein they could rebuild their own lives. Hardworking yet underserved employees of government have become our beneficiaries right now. NHA is imploring new programs, new products, new services to include the utilization of existing properties for rental housing, expanding the resettlement program to cover ISFs along the high risks in all areas, not only in, in Metro Manila, but all over the country and in all other regions. With our corporate term ending in 2025, we take a serious commitment for the construction of housing situation and find that in its say still play a very critical role in the coming years. The housing needs stands at 6.7 million again. And at the end of 2020, it will continue to rise. And it will continue to grow unless it is addressed. The proposed new energy charter not only gives the authority another 50 years of service, but its mission is to introduce improvements to its organization, powers, and functions so that we'll be able to address our own shortcomings and tackle the housing challenges more effectively. We shall be presenting to you this morning, Your Honor, a six-minute video, and after that, we shall manifest our proposed bill for consideration to the committee as well as to the technical working group. But before that, allow me to express again our special thanks to Senator Tolentino, Senator Ivy Marcos, Senator Lito Lapid, and all the rest of the leadership of the Senate as well as the membership for, ship, for, author, for, for sponsoring the said bills. Through their sponsorship and committee reports, we commit for the next 50 years your honor of NHA's life is committed to constructing quality homes and building better lives beyond this administration of Duterte and well into the future. So thank you. And we will now have a six minute video. Then after that, we will just manifest our proposed bill, your honor, for submission. Can we have the thank video? Thank you, GM Escalada. I hope we can meet again uh, after 50 years to discuss your accomplishments. <laughs> we will show our accomplishments, your honor. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> At natawa kayo daw, kaya pa natin yun. <laughs> Oh, hindi tayo abot ng 50 years nito, ha? Ha? 50, se 50 seconds lang, eh. Implement your 
ideal housing program through the community initiative approach. While NHS technical people, the engineers, the architects, and the policy makers design their livable spaces appropriate to their capacity to pay, which in turn the authority also subsidized for affordability. Throughout the years, the NHA is an institution that brought development outside the metro. Massive housing construction and relocation activities in various locations, such as Bulacan, Rizal, Pampanga, Cavite, Batangas, and Laguna, resulted in investments and infrastructure developments to pour in and create an economic home in those areas. With the establishment of regional offices, the authority was able to deliver the same housing programs in the countryside, including housing provision for typhoon, earthquake, fire, internal conflict family survivors, indigenous peoples or IP housing, and ready for occupancy homes for former rebels. The NHA is also the government's arm in providing housing to families affected by major transportation and road development projects. The authority paved the way for the clearing operations for the North and South Rail relocation and resettlement projects, where thousands of families were relocated and enjoyed basic amenities in their new communities. Today, the NHA is involved in the resettlement preparations for the implementation of the North and South Long Haul projects of the Department of Transportation and other Department of Public Works and Highways infrastructure projects. With the instruction of President Duterte, the NHA was also tasked to clear the Marawi ground zeros for an exploded ordinance, fast track temporary and permanent shelters for survivors, and lead the implementation of the Marawi Master Development Plan. Galit sa ito po, wala kang ma masabi sa kanila ngayon. Tulong support pa sila sa amin. Lahat ng pangangailangan namin, anong reklono sa islamo namin, ina-action namin. Ito, ang ganda, ang sarap sa feeling na magkaroon ng ganito bahay po na dati dream house po lang po ito. Pero ngayon, it's a dream come true. Kasi, dami-dami po. Ay, dami-dami po. The years in housing provision spelled it all for NHA. NHA's expertise does not only lie in building homes, but also in empowering people, building communities, rebuilding war-torn and planted ravaged towns and municipalities. 
The authority has a history of its own and its story of housing the Filipinos should continue. As we embark on the next 50 years, the NHA is committed to constructing quality homes, building better lives. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, NHA. Slow motion pa yung ano nyo sa ending, ah. So, can we have the uh, reactions relative to financing from GSIS, SSS, and Pag-ibig before we... You can have your lunch, uh, those physically present here. Uh, GSIS, uh, the uh -huh. Vice President of GSIS, I think. Uh, and, and his team, are you still around? Uh, uh, good afternoon. Sa namin. Isang wall lang ang uh, yes, Your Honor, but I'm um, sorry, uh, we, because of the pandemic, we're under work from home. So, anyway, uh, good afternoon, Your Honors, uh, Chair, uh, Senator Siveros, uh, and uh, Senator Wynne Uh Thank you for inviting GSIS no, to participate in today's hearing. And uh, on behalf of our PGM and the other officers here present, let me just uh, comment on the, the, the bill huh? extending the, the charter of the National Home uh, Housing Authority, rather. Particularly, uh, there are three bills no, with uh, practically the same provisions. Uh, I'm referring to, to the provisions on SSS and GSIS participation. Uh, which uh, practically uh, mandates the GSIS and SSS to, I'm using the term of the bill, to absorb the bonds issued by the NHA. Uh, well, uh, with all due respect and the uh, way we understand uh, perhaps the, 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 the reasons behind uh, this provision, but uh, uh, we, we have to emphasize, no? uh, and I think uh, SSS has also the same sentiment, that uh, both GSIS and SSS were, uh, our primary mandate is for to, to administer the pension and retirement funds of the government and the private, uh, the government uh, employees and uh, those in the private sector. And uh, practically, if... Uh, the provisions that uh, we, we will be mandated and uh, notwithstanding our charter to absorb, uh, we, we find the term uh, rather vague, but uh, we what we understand perhaps is that uh, we will be practically uh, mandated or forced to 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 absorb the bonds. No? And when we speak of bonds, these are debt, debt instruments and we will be forced to ad, uh, absorb the liability. Uh, or the bonds issued. Uh, by the way, under these charters, the revised bills, I think this is also something new that uh, NHA has authority to issue bonds. We, we don't even know what are these bonds. And uh, this provision practically forces SSS and GSS to absorb or answer for the bonds issued by the NHA. Uh, well, uh, our charter is very clear, no? notwithstanding the qualifying statement also, that um, the funds of GSIS is, is exclusively for uh, the social insurance, and because these are hard earned monies, monies uh, that were uh, deducted from the salaries of government employees and limited for purposes of future contingencies for retirement and pension. And uh, we, as the administrator, it is our obligation and uh, also responsibility to safeguard these funds. And uh, hear him or probably you can assist your uh, colleague uh, attorney pimental of gsis yeah. uh, we, we, we cannot hear you sir I, i'm sorry okay, now we can hear you now pero hindi namin narinig yung sinabi mo kanina sir pasensya na so uh, briefly okay. if, you, if you don't mind can you restate that uh yeah, taking yes, into Your consideration Honor. your actuarial life also 
Yes, of course, Your Honor. And the, our mandate primarily is to administer and uh, to, to defray you know, the, the pension fund of government employees. And uh, that is why under Section 34 of our charter, the, the GSIS funds and all other funds administered by the GSIS should be used exclusively for such purpose. And uh, if these provisions will be adopted, then practically it will be not only against the, these provisions of our mandate, but uh, also the spirit uh, of the GSIS law. And so, with all due respect, uh, we, we, we would suggest that uh, perhaps uh, if, if uh, the NHA needs funding, it can be sourced from other sources. No? There, are, there are other government agencies, perhaps government banks. But uh, we, we suggest that uh, these provisions be excluded. And the pension fund system like the SSS and GSIS be, be spared from uh, funding uh, uh, these uh, bonds uh, to be issued by the NHA. Uh, that is all uh, basically, Your Honor, and uh, we, we, we ask that we be, we be allowed to submit our position paper on this issue, Your Honor. Thank you, GSIS. We will wait for your position paper, but the Chair would like to remind GSIS and SSS the provision that you are probably objecting to is not a new provision. It is part of a Section 15 of Presidential Decree 757 creating the National Housing Authority as early as July 31, 1975. And if I may read Section 15, quote, other SSS and GSIS participation, notwithstanding any provision of the respective charters to the contrary, the social security system and the government service insurance system shall absorb all or part of the bonds or securities issued by the authority in such proportions as may be determined by the National Economic and Development Authority and approved by the president. So this is not a new provision. This has been in existence for the last 45 years, uh, GSIS and uh, SSS. So there is nothing new. They just, uh, the authors of the measures just ad adopted Section 15 of the existing law. So this is part of your mandate now, GSIS and SSS. Uh, so th th there is nothing new that would uh, uh, expand the uh, powers of NHA as well as dilute the financial resources of uh, GSIS and SSS. So this is, this is being applied. As I speak, uh, GSIS uh, and SSS. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, my my apology, you know, if if I did did not uh, did, did not uh, did not uh, consider the, the the old provisions, but uh, still, uh, as far as I can recall, no, 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 na nasa GSIS ako. Although our finance people here can uh, can can add, no, it, uh, I don't recall any any if the such provisions were operationalized no? because uh, under the new charter no, which came later no, I think uh, Republic Act 8291 of the GSIS uh, if this this uh, provisions will qualify as our part of our investments we also have certain standards and that is uh, yield uh, profitability etc. No? So uh, if any provisions, even if it is it, it exists now, no, uh, we would still follow the standard imposed by the, the later charter, uh, the new law, no, the, the charter of the GSS, which is later than uh, PD957. So uh, th that is all, Your Honor. But even even if it already exists, uh, we, we also like to manifest that uh, if ever uh, it will be renewed, then uh, such provision, which is apparently inconsistent also with the new charter of the GSS, be recon seriously reconsidered or even then uh, excluded, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think you better ask your legal team to take a look into that provision, which is an existing option on the part of the National Housing Authority. SSS, uh, we recognize you, Attorney Joseph De Sunya of the Social Security System. Uh, we recognize you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ch uh, Chairperson, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Your Honors. Uh, salamat po sa pag-imbita sa amin sa pagdinig na ito. 
Uh, we wish to confine our observations on Section 18 of Senate Bill 2140, Section 20 of Senate Bill 2248, and Section 19 of Senate Bill 2098, since these are the only provisions where XSS is expressly mentioned and referred to. This has to do po with the proposals wherein uh, the SSS is supposedly being mandated or required to absorb all or part of the bonds or securities issued by the National Housing Authority in the implementation of its uh, housing uh, programs. Uh, to be uh, completely uh, uh, truthful, Your Honors, the official SSS position is still undergoing an internal and review process that is escalated up to the office of the Secretary of the Department of Finance as the ex officio chairperson of the Social Security Commission, the governing board at SSS. However, as our initial observations, we wish to respectfully uh, inform the Senate that uh, uh, the main mandate of the SSS is really to provide social security protection to millions of its SSS members and their beneficiaries against the hazards of disability, sickness, maternity, old age, death, and involuntary separation or unemployment. Now, for the portions of the reserve fund that are not needed to meet the current benefit obligations, under our charter just passed uh, in uh, 2018, the Social Security Commission is under a fiduciary obligation to manage and invest the same with the skill, the care, and prudence necessary to earn an income not less than the average rates of treasury bills or any acceptable market yield indicator in any and all of its investment activities. This is expressly mentioned in Section 26 of Republic Act Number 111. 1999. This is our guidance, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson, Your Honors, because the new SSS Charter has laid down the statutory, uh, statutory requirements for undertaking such investment activity. And uh, if this uh, proposed uh, requirement to absorb any bond or security is to be interpreted in this context, uh, Again, we wish po to uh, invite the kind attention of uh, uh, this uh, honorable committee that we have this uh, provision expressly uh, laying down the requirements in our own charter. Uh, that would be all for now, uh, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honors. Uh, as soon as the official position statement is uh, approved and finalized, it will be submitted immediately. Thank you very much once again. Thank and you. And good afternoon, Po. Yes, again, I remind SSS that there is an existing uh, statute, uh, PD 757, that requires, notwithstanding any provision to the contrary of the charter of SSS, to absorb all or part of the bonds or securities issued by the NHA. So I think you should reconcile that with uh, your interpretation of the functions of SSS. And if the chair would want to pursue this, and I'm pursuing this, are there existing housing programs being done or pursued by the social security system? Meron ba? Yes, Meron Mr. Uh, Chairperson. Meron uh, ba kayong housing programs? On November 3, 1989, the SSS and the National Housing Authority entered into a memorandum of agreement wherein a lending program was created to encourage private landowners, developers, and entrepreneurs in Metro Manila and its environs and other urban centers in the country to put up residential buildings for rent. Under the said MOAPO, the SSS shall act as the provider of long-term funds and the NHA as program implementor. Uh, I do not have the current and actual data now, but uh, this is also one of the considerations po in framing our official position statement. Uh, we have a previous experience with NHA to consider in regard to the specific proposals now found in Section 18, Section 20, Section 19 of Senate Bill 2140, Senate Bill 2248, and Senate Bill 2098. Rest assured, Your Honor, that we will be submitting the 
official position statement to include po a discussion on this previous experience of SSS with National uh, Housing Authority. Thank you, SSS. So you admitted that you have a current tie-up with uh, NHA. And perhaps your position paper uh, to be submitted should uh, reflect that current uh, tie-up with NHA. And, and I, the chair uh, would probably, uh, thinking out loud, uh probably express that th th there should be there should be no reason to cut that umbilical cord so to speak between sss and uh nha because uh, i think it's working so we go to the last uh speaker pagibig again uh the senior vice president is, is here is here and recognized mr uh, santa maria are you still around yes he's Sir, Mr. Chair, good good afternoon. Go ahead. I think, yeah, Mr. Chair, the uh, position paper is essentially a reiteration of the funds position of the funds position paper on House Bill eight eight seven four, House Bill eight eight nine three, and Senate Bill twenty ninety eight previously submitted to the Department of Housing last April twenty twenty one. The fund fully supports the bill, which will strengthen the National Housing Authority and uh, extend its uh, corporate term. The fund recognizes the various projects currently being implemented by the National Housing Authority, including its government employees housing program intended for low-cost, uh, low-income government employees. For this, the National Housing Authority has collaborated with Pagibig Fund requiring that loan under this program be taken out through Pagibig Fund's housing loan program. <clears throat> the fund how highlighted the power to be given to NHA to undertake the financial uh, financing of housing program initiated by the local government units or local communities and uh, mentioned that the fund has a similar partnership with private sector and the local government units. By strengthening the National Housing Authority, there will be more housing projects, both in urban and rural communities, which will in turn open more options and possibilities for Pagibig Fund members. Underscored was a difference between the fund's objective from that of the NHA in that for the latter. The programs are mainly for informal settlers, homeless or low income citizens. In this connection, it was stressed that any intention of NHA to expand its coverage must be escalated to this youth and other key shelter agencies to ensure that there will be no encroachment in resp respective mandates. The fund took opportunity to inform the committee of its various programs, including its affordable housing program for locals uh, members. And finally, the fund took note that the National Housing Authority may acquire and manage land to be used for its program, but exclude uh, from these that are lands owned by government-owned and controlled corporations or GFIs engaged in shelter financing. However, NHA may opt to purchase acquired assets of the fund subject to terms and conditions under the prevailing guidelines. Based on this correspondence from the Senate Committee, uh, ito lang po yung position po ng pag fund. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, pag uh, Realizing the lateness of the hour, and considering the uh, the matters raised by Senators Gachalian and Onteveros, the committee will be constrained to suspend deliberation of the, the measures uh, uh, at issue here. And we will we will we will have succeeding hearings uh, taking into consideration the development coming from the Mandana's ruling as well as uh, the current pandemic uh, and the response of the should as to the query of uh, Senator Ontiveros. But th this will be uh, 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 a continuing uh, deliberation. We, 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 cannot, we cannot finish this today, but I, I propose, I post the following uh, queries to the NHA family. One. Apparently, for our next hearing, succeeding hearings, we might have a second hearing, third hearing, fourth hearing, fifth hearing. We might have a hearing 
uh, right right inside uh, an informal settlement community. I'm inclined to do that in the Mangahan floodway. If needed, we might have a hearing in Marawi. Uh, one, has the power of eminent domain included in your functions under Presidential Decree 757 been utilized properly, appropriately? I have yet to uh, hear see a report that uh, the power of eminent domain was utilized by NHA. Your number two, your legal team has now to prepare an answer as to your requested additional function, which might be controversial uh, at this point. The DILG is listening, the League of Cities and the LMP are listening. You are asking for an additional power to convert lands, which is not part of your original mandate, which probably others might think would be in direct conflict with the local government code. This has to be answered in the succeeding hearing. Uh, number three, you are requesting uh, an additional function to uh, to address to address measures relative to emergencies uh, disasters etc this might this might conflict with uh, mandates of other uh, agencies Num number four uh, th there is probably a, a need to formulate a, a broader housing framework beyond the current national urban development and housing framework of 2017 to 2022, which will expire uh, next year. So this has to be uh, addressed and incorporated in, in the measure that we are tackling right now. Fifth, incentives being given to the private sector should be likewise addressed. We probably have to take into consideration the greater participation of the private sector. Is there a possibility of the NHA acquiring unfinished, undeveloped private sector initiative as part of the NHA, NHA's program. And conversely, is there a possibility of the private sector acquiring unfinished and undelivered NHA programs? Number, and as a hybrid of that, is there a possibility of twinning NHA and NHA. private housing development efforts? So if we look forward to a, an extension of 50 more years, private sector initiatives would have to be incorporated. The rights of the urban poor would have to be incorporated and enshrined in whatever extension you might want. So this will take, this will take time uh, to deliberate. We'll have a second, third, fourth, Hearing, uh, we, what we started today will be incorporated as part of the records, but definitely we will work towards the extension, taking into consideration the inputs coming from various stakeholders. And I'd like to thank the DNR, they, they've been listening. I'd like to thank the GCG, they've been part of this. I'd like to thank all other government agencies and the NGOs. We'd like to thank Senator uh, Honteveros, who's been very uh, attentive and uh, very supportive of uh, the measures we tackle today. So without objections on the part of my colleagues, the, the committee hearing in so far as the extension of the charter of the National Housing Authority is hereby suspended. Unless Senator Gativeros would like to make a final input. 
Just to say marami salamat po Mr. Chairman at marami salamat din po sa ating mga resource persons. Salamat po. Again, thank you for all who attended. Hearing is suspended.